have to use a different phone now. Oh. God. Um. My work went and everything goes crazy. Just hold on. We wait for people to come on. Just give people a few minutes to come back on, you know. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching and those who were sending us stars. I saw Nanama, I saw um I saw Nanama, I saw my brother Mark ja Mark Saho, um, you know, Usman and um, you know, I saw a lot of people. Thank you all for sending us stars. We appreciate like I said, this helps us to, to grow as a network. Oh, someone is just saying I lost credit. No, I did not. I already know. See, I work with Africell, so I get a lot of I get a lot of credit. Now work more than <laughs> no, actually no. It's um so yes, yeah, so Mr. Mr. Manny, so uh, well, I let's can, I can barely hear you now. Can you hear me now? Very faint. Very faint? Yes. Um because I know somebody's trying to call, but I was can you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's very faint. Maybe just raise your voice a bit so they are All right. Hold on. Let me see. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Can you I hear me? Yeah. So, um, now what I wanted to ask, the other question that I wanted to ask is this. Um, a lot of, a lot of the people um, would say uh, that we were talking about, sorry, I, I'm distracted. We were talking about how Sabali was doing right, but when this in an un, unfortunate incident happened, that we all condemned the the attack on the law enforcement agency, um, which we all condemned to the strongest time, and we, we all pray that justice happened very soon, and the perpetrators are brought to justice so that victims can have a closure. But um, we, the first, um, the first um, communication that came out from the government spokesperson, um, a lot of people thought was really very much uh, directing to the UDP uh, because um, uh, not directly, but when he spoke about uh, the, 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 the security officer being part of Chairman Dabo's um, protest in, 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 in Banjul, he also spoke about him walking at the Brickham Area Council. Uh, first, um, that was refuted. The issue of working at Brickham was refuted by the uh, Brickham Area Council. And also even the National Security Officer came out and said, uh, actually, the guy works for a local uh, security firm, like, you know, as a watchman. Do you think this was a, something that you guys thought? What was your observation first when you had the government spokesperson speak? We, we thought that was extremely unfortunate and uncalled for. Mm -hmm. He is not a police official. Mm -hmm. And we had asked that everybody keep peace or have peace and we let the police do their job, which we know they are capable of doing with efficiency. Yeah. Do not try to direct the investigation. Do not try to direct any conclusions. And particularly do not try to jump to any conclusions without any evidence. Yeah. And that was totally unfortunate because he did not have to say that. There is a police PRO who is in charge of that, who should be handling that, mm -hmm. not the government spokesperson. It's a police investigation, not a political commentary. Mm -hmm. Now, him joining, jumping to conclusions and saying all the wrong things and all, which are all falsehoods, in a way, it's good because it debunks exactly what was being planned against the UDP, apparently. Okay. Because unless they were planning something against the UDP, why would the government spokesperson, mm -hmm. without any shred of evidence, mm -hmm. jump to conclusions and lay out all of those things which are totally false? That should not happen. Okay? Now, saying, saying that this gentleman worked for PAC is another falsehood. 
which has been debunked by everybody, including the police officials, mm -hmm. for which we commend them. Mm -hmm. We commend them to stand them up for the truth and not going along the way that the government is supposed to have, you know, squinting them. Another thing he said, this gentleman was at the demonstration or the, in the that's a demonstration actually, when they came to support Chairman Chairman Tavo mm -hmm. at the courthouse, he said this gentleman was there. Yeah. And that also turned out to be a falsehood. The gentleman who was there, whose picture was put out, is a gentleman from Musumbala. So that also has been debunked. So why is the government spokesperson going out of his way to accuse UDP even before the investigation started? Even before they had any shred of evidence? And even without his conferring with the police, because it's clear that he did not confer with the police, he said he was sent to direct their investigation. That is the conclusion that we can jump to as well. Because why otherwise would he be saying all of those things? He should stay out of this and let the police do their job. And want the police to continue to be professional, to be respected. And to be respected, you have to do your job properly and be seen. And be seen to do your job properly. That's extremely important. And so far, what we are seeing, we are happy with what the police is doing. They are doing their job professionally, and they are being seen to do it professionally. That is the way to build the credibility of the police. And that's what we want to do. So that when they reach conclusions, everybody knows that, yes, this is the conclusion. Because they are professional people doing the job professionally. That is the kind of reputation we want for our police services. That's the kind of reputation we want for our judiciary. That's the kind of reputation we want for everybody, every public official in this country. Look, when they open their mouth, they start wondering, are they telling the truth or not? That does not serve anybody's cause. This country needs to be an ethical country, an ethical government, and an ethical public officials. And we thank the police for their professionalism so far in these investigations. What we heard were what we expect from our police force. And we hope and pray that you continue that way. This is a heinous crime. We should be investigated. The court is brought to court, to justice, and the full force of the law be applied to them. But that should be the culprit. Do not fabricate evidence. Do not try to, to direct the, director of the investigation to a particular area against your political opponents or otherwise. Stay out of this life. We have stayed out of this with the UDP. We said this is a matter under investigation by the police. We do not wish to comment on it. We want to stay out of it. Let the police do its job as we know they are capable of doing. That is what we want to see. So the government spokesperson and any other person whom I want to be taking should just hold their peace and let the police do its job. Because whatever comes out of those investigations will go to court. And they will, whoever comes as a witness will be cross-examined in open court. So the police credibility should be safeguarded. Because it will be unfortunate to go to court with evidence that's free, but police are beginning elsewhere, and the witnesses crumble in cross-examination, and the credibility of our institutions go and be great. We do not want that. We want to entrench the credibility and the liability of our institutions so that the Gambia is known as a law-abiding country, a country where you can count on the public officials to do the right thing. The police so far have gone in going down, the, down that lane, and we encourage them to continue doing that. That is what we want for this country. Because as Mr. Lava said, we want to come to power. And when we do, in 2026, we will be working with the same police force. And we want to be able to have those cordial working relations with them, professionalism. That's what we want. So the, 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 the politicians who stay out of the way of the police, policemen and all the security officials, do not try to influence them. Let them do their job and do it clearly, openly, honestly, and trusting the trustworthy manner. That's what we want. So this is our take. So we support our police force uh -huh. and encourage them to do the right thing. Now, finally, before I let you go, you guys are still at the police station in Kairaba. And as we speak, uh, the, the, the information here is Sabali has not been formally charged. They brought the charge sheet, but because it was not signed, 
now they have gone back to consult, right? Yes, they came with a charge sheet and they read the charge sheet to him and asked him if he wants to sign for that. Mm -hmm. I should accept it. He said no, naturally, because they are not, he didn't do any of those things. Yeah. So they went back with the charge sheet and everything. They said they will get back home. So as far as we are concerned, he's formally not charged yet. So okay. we're waiting for them to, 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 to decide one way or the other, whether to charge him or to drop the charges. Okay. They, 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 charge they, want, they, have, they said they want to do is is already is already is, as far as we are concerned there yeah. is no formal charges yet it's for already 4 33 and i know in the next one hour or so i said it's already 4 33 right now as i'm speaking to you and then uh, the 72 hours is about to clock out to 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 expire um you're expecting that they will be uh, bailing him either charge or not he should be able should be leaving today because any time he stays in that um police station becomes a little um, is it unconstitutional you call it because after 72 hours it's either you charge the person or you let them go right you take them to court and bail them or you let them go right after 72 hours right yeah we are hoping that they will be released today okay because as i said to start with mm -hmm. there's absolutely no reason for them to be sitting here for four days when they are not being interrogated anyway when they are not having the police investigations when they are not being um feared to have an impact on maybe on witnesses mm -hmm. sub, 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 sub to witnesses that's mm -hmm. not going to happen and there is nothing being held against them there's nothing no, no, no charges have been preferred. Why do they have to sit here from Friday to now? The only time they were questioned was on Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And since then, nothing else has happened. They are just languishing in the cells here for no reason. Okay. That should not be happening in a democratic country where the rule of law is paramount. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Here. On Friday afternoon, they should have been let, allowed to go home. They have not. They spent Friday night here, Saturday night here, Sunday the whole day again. For three days they've been here. Today is the fourth day. They do not need to be here. We expect that they will be released and allowed to go home to their families. And if they are needed for questioning, they will come back here. They go nowhere. This will have no slight risk to society. There are no risk of supporting businesses. So I don't know why they are being held here up to now. Okay, we'll get back to you today. Yeah, we will get back to you as um, we will get back to you um, uh, um, later on. Well, if you get any information, uh, please let us know. We will be here in the next uh, another thirty minutes because I'll be talking to Nene. Nene is right now at the kind of thing also, so she'll be giving us updates. So here again for the next thirty minutes, if there's anything that you you know that any update from there, please let us know. I will get back to Nene. And on that note, I would want to say a big thank you to Nene. Yeah. She has been very strong and has been with our people. Yeah. From from Friday to day, she's been here every single day. Yeah, she has and been. And the UDP executive has been here. Yeah. People in the party, everybody has been here. Yeah. People have been supportive. So I want to say a big thank you to all of those people. And on a final note, I would want to say a big thank you to the police officers in Karnishim mm -hmm. and in Kairaba. They have been very professional, very polite, and they showed from the decorum. Yeah. And we appreciate that. Yeah. If there's any changes, I will let you know further. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Mane, for speaking to us. Thank you, my thank, pleasure. thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mane. And then we'll be talking to Nene also because um, she is uh, somebody is telling me my credit. No, it's not my credit. It was Narek. This name is Nyona. So when Narek goes, the router, the Wi Fi goes up. So we have to connect to the other. Yes, that's what happened, actually. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to call and thank you all for Harriet and um, for sending stars. We really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for sending us stars. Now, let me call uh, Nene now. Thank you, Harriet. Thank you so much for sending us stars. Let me call Nene now and see what is the update in uh, Carnifing. Uh, Nene is in Carnifing. We definitely, from our team, Kirfat, we really want to really thank Nene. She has been running to the police station uh, to see bio, um, you know, bio, you know, is not a, full, a staff of Kirfat, but he's a contributor to one of our shows. So because of that proximity and Nene has been running up and down, but it's not just bio, even when 
Bora was held. We all know how she was running up and down at the police station. She was the one who even bailed Bora. Today I said to her, Nene, how are you going to bail by? You don't have ID card anymore. Your ID card is, is being kept for Bora. She said, yeah, actually I don't have an ID card. The fact that she goes there, take food for them and make sure everything is okay. We, we really want to thank her for that. And thank you so much, Harry Lamin Bojang for the stars. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Lamin. We appreciate you. So my area don't know it goes few minutes they come back so they don't stay long that's the good thing about you know where i live but no follow up on that. <laughs> that's the good thing about it so let me call um actually i don't live in Bunu i don't yes i don't let me call um um call nene uh, and see let me call her direct call morgan um thank you so much everyone thank you for for watching um i think if you go through stuff like this somebody like Nene, if you go through stuff like this and you know you've been to police you know how it is you don't rest when people are in custody and i call her this morning i said how do you do this and she's like you know i just do it so yeah she's she's been amazing you know she Nene is just amazing when it comes to stuff like that so um her phone is. Let me call. She's with MC. Let me call MC. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, Hey, Usman, thank you for your stars. We appreciate it. Hello. Ano nene, MC? Munge wa hagai bete. Jai nene. Naka, naka, ma life la yo, bala nene di pare. Mangi life on Kelfato, right? Why do mangi mail ni mangi dego voice nene? So, so, mara de face speaker of again. Wow, because. Well, then I could call in two minutes time. Yeah. Um, so I know she's talking to some some people. She's still starting out that issue out there. Um, you guys don't know the kind of magic Nene runs for us when things like this happen. I remember when Bora was kept, I was in the US and then you know, I was calling Nene up and down. She she wakes up, takes food for her, him and stays there the whole, you know, time trying to talk to the police and go back bring dinner and make arrangements you know calling the police officers trying i don't know how she does this but i guess it's the passion of a, uh, an activist somebody who also has been going through something like this she understands the mindset of how when people are detained what they go through she so she's she's she's, she's amazing when it comes to stuff like that this morning we were, i was talking to her about civil four and then i just check on her what is the situation? And I, she said, I think they will be able to do this. She said, you know, I said, are you going to be able to bail? And I said, hi, my partner now, this my She was planning to bail him, forgetting that her ID card already was there for um, Bora, so she couldn't bail him. It was at that point we were thinking, what do we do? How can you arrange for his family to come and bail him? She is that selfless, but you know, I think, you know, if you have gone through stuff like this yourself, you know, there's nothing you can do but to just support people who are going through that also. So um, that is the update. Badi ngolo, ali amo ili lani mani be mufoka ndrong, walongko mamadu sabali, ani sirifo baya sonko mini alonko yi muta. Hani saibu police station otole, minke ta kabiri yi muta arjuma lungo, ko bi, bi lo nyanta kela tri days ki puri yi bula. But according to Mr. Mane Emin Fuolom, ye kaiti to dole na atie, ka puru nyanta asan la, itolko wumu charge it, let's say, I haven't seen it, but it could charge it long, puru ya asan. So, but it kabri ya na ati, puru ya asan, you know, itoli ya rible, itoli ya feel like me kon yo asan, is consenting to whatever the authorities are putting against them. So, ye man son ka asan, wole ya man, police owner that way, okay, we are going back to consult. But it, it mean, mind you, when the police were covering Nada, they were very respectful. They also told um, uh, Sabali Munamala rightly 
as to signing that document, now that I sign, now that I can sign. So, Sabali, now the lawyer, and he told Mr. Manning, you mean baby, you not have a Sabali, I can sign, Sabali, can I sign? So, police will call you, you come around, you can consult, and they will be coming back uh, again. So, be naturally 72 hours when you're at the Sila Bila. So, Korang Tata Kotek, now I don't have to do it, Tata Kotek. So, 72 hours will uh, uh, be elapsed in uh, Bile. So, hopefully, you won't be able to be. So, we will go to the car, so Mr. Mane will also be able to go police will be back to Banju, because they are going to consult with their, their people and they will be back to go to the car. So, we will be able to go to the car, we will be able to go to the car, we will be able to go to the car, but in that year, Bondi knew Koto. Yes, Samba is still for Samba Kanifin. Yes, Abali to um, to to uh, how do you call it? Kairaba. Um, so this is what is the uh, Minekeda. So Mbole update the Kangala. Yeah. So Sayan Kali Ajale. Kurang Tato Kote. Now it is gone again. But thank God I have my cuttings open, and I'm not connected to the router at this point, so I should be able to be get Janini uh, Aniba Parera. So this is what is happening. But hopefully, um, you know, they will be bailed today. Um, you know, maybe folk can hold on, right? Um, yes, Luali, Silo di Police or Fanana, me after more question. You seventy two hours less at all. Kemuta, Tapkil investigation, okay. Nico, I may even pull it among Nico among investigation, okay. Among the investigation, we give that to them, they, they are doing an investigation. We don't know what law enforcement team, monkey security, so we don't know what they're looking for. It's only a law in the so Nico be investigation, or that's fine. So the law gives them up to um, up to 72 hours to to do their investigations, and that is what's happening right now. But uh, Bile was 72 hours will be elapsed, so it's either a charge or a bula um, yata. So Bula Batrola, Nene should be able to update us because she's been really, really, really into this. Kabrina Kumasta for B. So I have to come to Biden. But a few minutes, it will come back. That's the good thing. It still goes, but hopefully very soon. Uh, so that is what is happening right now. Um, so we are hoping to, uh, to, to hear from Nene. Sign in, sign tema. Uh, and then we should be able to update and see. Uh, I'm told Sabali is uh, and Sirifo day. Actually, Sirifo knew the Amdale. I spoke to Sirifo yesterday, you know, by a very stubborn, very adamant, and very, very uh, stubborn. He doesn't, you know, he's not changed. He has not, you know, been shaken. He, he's, he, he, he told me, sister, and I, I kept on saying, Bio, you know, you have to eat, and he's like, I'm not going to eat because I think he was more frustrated about um, a condition of all detention, keeping him in cell. Can you can imagine I was kept in the cell for for hours? You know, it's dark in the cell, it's dirty, it's not, you know, you know, he was very um, disturbed by that condition. He felt like he didn't deserve that because um, he was just questioned. So, you know, I think that's what threw him to. Um, um to uh um how come the mpp support all of us the whole trying to kill sabal and Romo is isn't arrested well that is the question uh for the police uh um say for city but i would like to have a lawyer you know because i think these things are important uh, i don't know if sergeant is you know you know um, i'm just seeing a statement from who let me see. Uh, actually, Gambia for Gambia for all just sent in a statement. Let me read. Gambia for all expresses concern. That is Bibi Dabo's party. They just sent in a statement. I'm gonna read it for them right now, and we'll publish it later. Gambia for all expresses concern at the implication of implication of statements made by the government spokesperson on the recent tragic killing and the wounded wounding of PIU personnel officers. Oh, okay. They're, yeah. 
Gambians are very good at confusing people. Uh, Ibrahim Aji Sankare, the Gambia government spokesperson on coffee time with uh, Peter Gomez on the 14th September 2023. This could be the most consequential false statement coming from a government official, no less a cabinet ranking government spokesperson, in relation to one of the most heinous crimes perpetrated against Gambian security forces. Wow. Uh, this, the Gambia for All uh, Party who regards this incident of the 12th September that resulted uh, in the death and injury of PIU officers as an extremely serious matter affecting our collective sense of security and a threat to our national security. GFA and the Gambian public expect the authorities to handle this matter professionally, fairly, maturely, and in accordance with the law of the country. These stakes couldn't be higher. However, the reaction of the authorities so far have been anything but reassuring. Regrettably, before the official police briefing, the Gambia government spokesperson went on the radio wave airwaves to, to proffer a narrative of the tragedy that is very much a variance with the limited information provided by the security authorities. In this regard, one is inclined to draw the conclusion that the government spokesperson's description of the shooting, uh, tragic shooting could be labeled as misinformation, if not outright fabrication. Wow. The government spokesperson may be subconsciously referring to himself in the description of the Gambian character. It is demeaning for a senior government official to refer to citizens of your own country in such a derogatory manner. He must apologize and retract the statement. The government spokesperson's self-interjection in the case, describing in detail in profile, profession, and potential accomplices of the alleged perpetrator should be a matter of great concern to all citizens and for the rule of law in our country. After all, the law of our country assumes that we are all presumed innocent until proven guilty. If the accused individual is found to be a, the culprit, he should face the full force of the law. The responsible thing to do is to allow the security services thoroughly investigate the matter and justice takes its course. The Gambia for All Party has al always expressed concern about competency or the lack of fear of in the current administration. In this case, the government spokesperson, we cannot, can, we are not surprised by the debacle, but the fact that he does not consider his position is now untenable. It is a worrying sign of lack of accountability. It is a worrying sign um, of the lack of accountability in the current administration. Long live the Gambia. GFA communications, Manjai Kanifin. What a strong statement from the Gambia for all. We will put the statement out, but um, you know, it's um, you know, we'll send it out for our our team to publish it now on the website for you all to see. But um, this is what um, the the Gambia for all is saying. So I think a lot of people are raising concerns about the, the government states, the government spokespersons. Um, um, statement how you know he characterized and described uh, the incident some of the things that he said came very uh, different from what the police are reporting so um, this is the statement from the Gambia for all uh, party so let me try Nena again because um, yeah this is a very strong statement from Gambia for all so but we will just publish it right away and so you can all read it on the page. Yeah, let me, Nene. Nene is so busy coordinating, so it's difficult to. Uh... Nene, are you available now? Say Nene. Say first. Okay. Nene. Yes. 
first and foremost, before we even go to the conditions, where do you get all of this um, zeal, motivation, and to, to, to be everywhere whenever people are detained or they're, how, how do you do this? And 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 um, um, dealing with such situations again, man. Personally, anybody that knows me growing up, man, I have been imagining the service of people since growing up in school and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, my son, late grandmother used to, used to tell me I'm a born leader. Um, and people, I drive joy from from people. My interaction with people, giving uh, a helping hand, helping them, and all that. That's where I drive joy. But I really add to pools, you know, these things. You go must then, you know what I mean. So at the end of the day, with my exposure going, learning to school, school and everything else, you know, I have them come to understand me. So, so the, yeah, the reason why I say this because so this man called put out so because man I know um you know do leave from the Isa Fati case to to the Fajan cases to um you know but Bora Bimeke Binkoti actually Mangoa guys now this morning Bimala call him Manela buy your soccer game bills and then my even fat and I so my ID card the more bomb like Billy Bora I'm not to my ID card. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give document because you use your document to bail people and all the stuff. But not just that, you are always there. I remember Bora, Suba, Ngon, Bechek, Bayo, Dimba, every single time. I was speaking to you around seven. Because this is the first hot meal. This is the first hot meal he's going to eat. So I have to take him food and all the stuff. So, and I sat here and I, I was thinking, you know, People, you you wouldn't want this, but sometimes I think it's just good to recognize Musta Mane Wanakofi just Balanganyo how you have been running from these two police stations, the police and yeah. And I think I was telling them before you come, um, sometimes it's from the 
fact me you have been going you're going to you went through this yourself one time so you know the conditions and and all of that stuff but yeah uh what is the situation in carnicking right now um right now man wants for this gift uh man never feel net that go help them that's the story the situation i i i i've come to the conclusion that nothing is going to happen today what? um Let- i want to believe me they're going to spend another night i might be wrong you understand but man no lack no lack is taking it right now because at the end of the day you know i was hoping that today is monday it's the expiration of the 72 uh period which i am of the view that it's been abused even though it's 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 a, it's, 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 a, it's law mm-hmm. but this law is being abused because repeatedly mm-hmm. we see these things happen and then what comes out of it nothing just because you have power you restrict somebody you hold them uh, because it's within the confine of the law and then what happens and mm-hmm. you know what i've been from going back and forth like bora one slip in the statement and everything else you care for the being correctly say and after all what the can be doing that i'm on that so what's the need of holding somebody for those many hours again with family them apart from friday and so apart from friday it's only today that you have officers come to talk to them again and that was in regard to the charge and the bill you know which they have they have you know uh, categorically denied and say we're not going to be part of this you know so what happened during all this night that they spent into detention day and night and nothing has happened so when you say okay we're holding somebody for the sake of investigations are going on mm-hmm. then there should be engagement throughout that period that you feel that you don't want to let them go and then you need them and you have to wait for them or if you let them go within that time something will happen that will jeopardize you know the investigations or hinder certain things to happen that's my layman understanding of that you know period but just to hold somebody put them in a cell and the somebody you look at them they bring them food they eat they bring them water they eat and that's it that's it so you limit their access to everything else and you hold them until the expiration of the time and say okay now bring the sorted to bail you you go and then come every day to report and go and the trend man you know it has happened the man you back there you know the project the bora myself my three cases three arrests different arrests you know four days three days one day or whatever nothing has happened until today you know what i think about that man man for example for my case every time i get arrested it's not that i sue them and i sue them and i get a judgment against them the court declared it was from constitutional and my rights are violated and they will go ahead and arrest me as a contact and they did that at that time and still now nothing has come out of it so who make any man must leave me court case maybe you know the sanctity of the court has been compromised um you know uh um I, I I don't know. I don't know. We seem to be in a jungle that you know we believe that the court at the highest arbiter and that's our last resort. But when the court decides nothing comes out of it, especially when it goes against the people that are in power. So what happens right now? We are here. You know, you only just bail how many hours ago? This was around one o'clock. Mm-hmm. One o'clock the league is after four o'clock. Because so my kids jump on now from three to four and then nothing has happened. And you don't even know who to talk to. All they say, okay, we're going to control, we're coming back and that's it. Nobody has come back. So I don't know what they say is possibly they're going to spend another night. I don't know. I could be wrong. Because it's still, you know, um, I don't know what's the time now, five o'clock or six o'clock. It's five o'clock right now. It's five. Yeah. So hang up people at twelve twelve midnight. They will be left to go. I don't know, because right now there is no way they can be taken to court. The courts are closed. So going taking them to court today is out of the picture. So possibly maybe they will take them to court tomorrow or they will release their court bail and we continue the investigation. I really don't know. And the bottom line is you don't even know who is in charge. That's another concern. You don't know who is in charge that you're going to go talk to. Because Kowa has you know, a different story and everybody is trying to run away from responsibility. That's my own analysis of things. It, it, it's concern. So if you say you, are not assured, you don't even know if they will... go home tonight that means 72 hours b um elapse now what happens let the lawyers tell us what happens today 72 hours elapse now and then nipping you will make a detention or a date go for the family they didn't buy it right i'm right well, obviously, obviously again let me let me take the reference to myself yeah because i was i was detained for four days four days and four days is four, a, a day after the 72 hours you know mm. but the next hour is 3 days. Yeah. So if you give somebody for four whole days that is way beyond the seven hour which means that regardless of what the what crime the person has committed, you know, you just say that you're supposed to 
שהוא upheld the rule of the law, you have been seen to be violating, you know, that law. You have been violating somebody's right, constitutional right, by taking them beyond the 72 hours and not taking them to court, you know. So I will not be surprised if the same thing is repeated on other people because that happened to me and what has happened, what came out of it. You know, even though the court has declared that you have done something wrong on a person and the court has gone ahead to, to find the state and say, you need to compensate this person for doing something wrong, but they haven't abided by it. Still today, they haven't abided by that, that court judgment. So I will not be surprised if the same thing is repeated on this person or on other people. So is a trend that it seems like anybody, nobody can do some, anything about it. So that's why I am like, you know, precedent has been set, and I'm sure it's not only me, mm. this, before me mm. and after me. So I will not be surprised if the same thing happens to them because it happened to me and I'm sure it happened to other people that I may not know. So that is why my concern, I'm, I am raising the concern, it's a possibility it could happen mm -hmm. because it's not anything that they are very, very particular and, and, and careful of not doing. It, it doesn't look like anything to them, to me, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. It's like they can do it and it's okay. So if they can do it and nothing, uh, there are no consequences. I, I, I would think that they would do it at any point in time that they feel it suits them or, 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 it, or it protects their interest or the interest of the people seemingly to be behind these things or have an interest in this. Interesting. I, I, I don't even know what to say. What is, how is uh, Bio doing? Um, I, you know, I'm not, I was not even worried about him, but you know, give us an idea. How is he doing? Um, at the time I left, he was he was really in good spirit. He's now come down and, 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 you know, come to terms with the reality that this is what it is. And I have to be with my right frame of mind to deal with this and be able to face it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time, you know, after they came and did the charge thing and everything, they left. Then another um, people came. They claimed to be from the... Um, serious in this investigative unit. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, serious investigative unit. I, I want to believe. I, I, I stand to be concerned. Mm -hmm. But what they came there for to say they wanted to profile him, take his profile. But he said, Category Secretary, I don't have time to talk to you guys. Because if you arrest me and if you call me for questioning and detain me for four days, um, I mean, three, four days today, yeah, you know, um, and you have not done that all this time. I will not talk to you at this point in time. You should have known who, because this was like, you should have known who you were doing, or this should have been during this time, not now. But they were like, oh, okay, you have a right to talk to us, and you have a right not to talk to us. So they left. So this was okay. this was after the bail incident happened, right? Yeah, after, 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 after they did the bail thing and everything else, they left. That's when somebody else, another couple of guys came and said they wanted to profile him. So, but he declined to talk to them. So basically they left. So since those people left, nobody else has come there. Nobody else has spoken to him, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's just out there in the cell. And 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 then he they are still he's kept in the cell, right? Because I think that was what really prompted him uh, going into hunger strike. Tell us about that. He is still in the cell. Actually, what happened is on Friday when I came here because they were in the CID office doing all the interrogation and the cautionary statements taking. Mm -hmm. So when they were going, I was talking to the officers. They, you know, like, okay, can you tell me what's happening? Whatever they say, okay, they're doing the investigation. Work. So afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, they say, like, okay, they need to go and consult and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was family first that they, when they finished with family, they uh, took family to the charge office. Mm -hmm. So when they took him to the charge office.
to your family. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll be allowed to cook, you'll be allowed to visit and everything else. Mm-hmm. So they took back. So that night when I went there, after when uh, it was late, because already they had put everybody inside themselves. So when the officer came and told Dyer to uh, get up to get into the cell, but then Dyer is like, no, this is not what I was told. I was told I'm the put on detention or whatever. And the officer was like, well, I am the one in charge here and nobody everybody gets inside the cell. And I was like, no, but this is not what I was told. And mm-hmm. the guy was like, well, that is beyond my control. If you want that, go talk to the police PR. By the way, police PR way is like at the headquarters. Can you imagine at that point in time, where are you going to find the police PR to talk to? So I was angry, but he just went into the cell and slept there. So the next morning when I went, the same officer that was doing the question, I said, I called him and said, okay, I am not happy. He said, why? I said, because... This is what you guys promised my brothers, but apparently the contrary happened. So you say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, you know, this is not, I said it in your present, you know, this is not what we're going to do, and blah, blah. It's like, you know, for me, I'm not at a police station, we're not police officers, but they were handed over to police uh, police officers because they were in charge. Mm-hmm. But I told the person who was there at the time, but I said, no, the person you told closed and went home. And it's like, possibly that person did not brief the other person that took home. I was like, okay, that's So as we speak, uh, they they they're putting them in the cell, and you know, and and since Friday, they have not been um, questioned uh, just until today, this afternoon when they brought them the charge sheet, right? Yeah, I mean, the one 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 thing that that really bothers me, and I've been saying it, mm-hmm. you know, um, criminals, uh, the law need to take its course on anybody that is found wanting, mm-hmm. right? Anybody mm-hmm. that breaks the law. But again, as human beings, wherever we find ourselves, whether in these police cells or whatever, for me, it's a concern. Mm-hmm. But if somebody can die in this cell, put, right, if you put them there, somebody can die in there within three hours. Yeah. Because the place is, is filthy, it's hot, it's dark, it's, 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 it's uh, funky, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, so it's, for me, it's a cause for concern. I don't care what you have done, but you should be a deal, basic things. I'm not saying throw a party for somebody who is detained or somebody who's charged. I'm not saying make a barbecue for them. I'm not saying bring them a bed or an AC. But let the place be conducive enough that they can breathe fresh air that will not, by the time they leave this cell, they will not be battling with other health issues that will warrant them to have to pay exorbitant amounts of money to take care of themselves. You know, some people are being detained wrongly on false charges. So why should I be detained on false charges? Then at the end of the day, you realize it was false. You allow me to go. Then I go deal with my health because you put me under a situation, a current uh, an atmosphere that was so, so unconducive. This needs to be looked into. I'm not, I, I've been talking about this ever since, you know. Yeah. I have been detained for four freaking days. Yeah. And I know what the condition is like. And I've been talking about that. So nobody deserves, nobody deserves to be under such conditions. Honestly, nobody deserves to be under such condition. I don't care what you have done. I don't care who you are. You know, the law needs to do its job. But your uh, environment also needs to look like a human being friendly environment. That, 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 that's my concern. Oh, interesting. I just hope so. What is so... So, so now, uh, I know Bali Ture is representing these people. Um you know, are they filing anything just to get them bailed out? Because if the police are not bringing charges, they know the same. But I mean, again, the courts are closed right now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, it's after four. Yeah. What, 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 what yeah. after office time is, is, is you know, um, it's beyond office time, so nobody can go to court right now. Um, I understand who he was in bank too, mm-hmm. but again, back and forth, back and forth, in and out, and he's not been able to get anything concrete. They told him that they were working on things and they will get back to him. But my, the reason why I think nothing is going to happen today because they've been like, we get back to you, we'll get back to you. It's past office hours. 
would anything happen right now. But they could just know? come and bail them and release them without taking to. Oh, yeah. that, that's a possibility. That's that is a possibility. That's, that's why I say, that's yeah. why I say it's a possibility. But then, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I'm an optimistic person. I mean, until midnight, anything can happen. So after, a minute after midnight, that will be Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I say until midnight. So hopefully before midnight, they will be asked to bring sorties and, and be let to go home. I hope, this, I hope that happens. I hope that happens. No, no, what does this mean for our democracy? I, I know I have said this openly. Um, nobody is above the law. If, 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 if the police security officers feel somebody um, is, uh, is, 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 they want to question somebody and, 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 and ask them questions, they are within the purview of the law to do that. I and mean, that is something that nobody should question. I mean, I think sometimes is the way they do it. But again, if um, it's 72 hours, that person also have rights, you know, they have rights. And as much as the police have rights to do this, to carry their conscience, people also have their rights as to human beings, right? That is why the constitution was made and made provisions for everybody, for us to be able to coexist. Now, if this is, these are some of the things that the people fought for to have, charge, to have change, a new Gambia, uh, if we're seeing something like this, are you worried as an activist, somebody who fights for people's rights? Are you worried? Oh, I am super worried, Fatu. I am super worried. For me, honestly, this breaks my heart that, okay, um, fast forward to, 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 to why we are all here. You know, two young lives have been lost. For me, I would have really been happy now to be advocating so for the police to do their job and find us who this shooter is, who killed, took this young life. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, everybody should have been advocating for and fighting and anticipating to know who this heinous individual is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the whole dimension has now shifted. I mean, we are so divided. And I feel it's a lost opportunity that, you know, for once again, if it has never happened, for once again, for the entire country to be united on one cause, on one agenda, to, this, to, to condemn this heinous act, for all to see that this is unwarranted and these people did not deserve it. For one, but it's a missed opportunity. And we found ourselves to be talking about somebody who's detained, somebody has been buried, somebody has been killed or killed. We don't know whether it's this one. A lot of people are saying this is the, uh, the person who's been uh, arrested. is the one. Some people are saying it's not the one. So basically, it's like a uh, You understand? Can make a picture? You know? Um, it's, it's really sad and it breaks my heart. And it's like uh, there's no direction right now. There's no direction. And me, I'm not going to interest. Me, I'm not going to make an interest. You know, my other post is my interest is Gambia, Project Gambia, anything that is going to maintain and protect the peace and security of the country. That is what my interest is. When I think me, arresting the family and the bio is a distraction from the main issue, mm -hmm. the main core, the main thing that we should have been advocating for. Because there is nothing more important than looking for who did this you know, crime. And it was too early. Let's say, let's give the benefit of the doubt that what they did or what they said is in connection to the, 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 the killing, the shooting that has happened. But it was really, really too soon to have made the determination and, and to make those arrests for questions. You know, because you're not even done with the, 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 the uh, uh, main suspect. Right, yeah. and there's so many allegations coming out from what is happening in that investigation room or where this person is sitting. And the entire time, and nobody can certainly tell you that this is the direction we are going with this investigation. And then you add another thing that is arresting other people and having to deal with their lawyers, with their families. Do we, do, do our security for have the capacity, the resources, the know how, the intellect, you know, and the, the skills to deal with these things? concurrently mm -hmm. you know <laughs> do, do they i mean i question that because if they did they wouldn't be distracted from the main issue and things would have been done and nobody would be so disgruntled and everybody you know spending hours 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 juggling from one police station to another because you, it would have been a one-stop shop uh, uh, a place of information mm -hmm. and everybody would be fed with the same exact information and there wouldn't be rumors trending from all corners. So we have an issue that needs to be tackled. There is a cause for concern and everybody
everybody should be worried. Everybody should be worried. You know, I was talking to my son last night, you yeah. know, about this whole thing because he is very, very, he has a very curious mind yeah. and he asks questions, you know. Yeah. Again, it's out of concern for the mom. Um, he knows where the mom's heart is. He knows what the mom does. But he comes and asks questions. Yeah. So he was like, okay, because some people are saying the person that has been arrested may not be the person who's responsible. Now he asks the question, mom, so how about if that is true and the main shooter is out there roaming the street with guns? It does that mean we are all not fair then? Yeah. That's a 14-year-old boy asking me that question. Yeah, actually I said that on my show. My, my boy, um, now when this happened, you want to talk to kids just to let them know. And in the morning when, when we when when we woke up, he was going to school uh, on Monday and I just hugged him and I said, hey, when you go to school, just make sure you don't go out to play today, okay? Because, you know, there's a, before they even caught this guy, I said, you know, there's a, there was a shooting and somebody, somebody, two, two police officers were killed and I could see the expression in his face. Whenever you tell him for him to go back to the U.S., the only thing he tells you, mom, I don't want to go because, you know, they kill people in, the, in America. I just want to stay here. That's the mindset he has, right? And he yeah. said to me, what, mommy? Do, where did they get the gun? Because I don't think people have gone in Gambia. And yeah. he was scared from that moment. He didn't want to go to school. I said, no, it's, everything is in place. Just make sure you don't go back. When he came back from school, he didn't go play. And at the end of the day, when it was time to go to bed, he refused to go to his room. He said, mommy, I'm scared. I don't want to sleep in my room because, you know, the suta is out there. So these are things that are very scary. We're not used to stuff like this. Like it's not that much common. So I think, like you said, this should be a time for the government to assure Gambians, to, yeah. to have proper communication as to assure Gambians of our safety, to assure Gambians as to what the government will continue to do to secure every pro life and property. And also to unify, because this is one single thing that really unified the entire country. Everybody knew that it was wrong, it was barbaric, it's something that is not accepted in our society. Um, and people, we don't, we, don't know it. we don't know it, and people were sympathizing with the police. I mean, you know, people don't really naturally have a good relationship with the police. But what I saw is this, with this, everybody, was saying even me that i don't praise the igp but i said at this point this is the time to stand with the igp and the government police force and mm -hmm. we sympathize with them and give them our solidarity and support because they need it so i think um like you said a lot of people also believe to be honest it looks like a destruction you know we should be concentrating on this case to find the perpetrators assure the victim's family but also assure the entire gambian how government is doing everything possible to make sure our lives and properties are safe now the what we don't understand like this is what i am going through with my son this is what you are going through with your son but this is what everyone is do, going through at home telling their kids assuring them now if we are doing at parental level we're doing it at home our our main institution the government should also be doing this to us assuring us that you know, don't worry. I know this is bad. This is painful, but we will be fine. This is what we're doing. Just to assure, carry us all along. So I think, yes, if Sabali and Songo have done something and they need to be questioned, I think they should be. But I think the hype should not be more about those people. And, to, and, and, and we, we get lost on this really what is happening. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it looks like a lost opportunity to bring us together as a nation and mourn the departed souls, but also show solidarity to the police and, 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 and heal as a nation. Because this is not just the victims. We are all indirectly affected in this. And we are, we, are, we are worried for our safety, for the safety of our kids. I think the police you know, could have used this opportunity to, to bring the population together and, 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 and hey, but well, they, people have different strategies and they deal with things right. differently, yes. Right. But yeah, but um, so where are you right now? You 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 are at another police station. I was at Kerala, but I left. I'm I'm trying to rush home to get, get, join a meeting, so I'm getting trying to get back home. I'm in the car going home right now. I left Kerala police station as well, um, so I'm on my way going home. So we'll we'll get updated. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, before the end of this program, I. We will get updates as to what is happening. So we what will, is happening. What is happening. Yeah. 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 continue to hope for the best. 
Mm. Hopefully, it's true. You know, I believe, you know, these are moments, but it will come to pass. But again, these are moments that we don't want to get back to at any point in time. Mm -hmm. So as the sooner we, we, we deal with it and get over with it, the better for all of us as a nation, honestly. The better for us. I mean, I, I sit and wonder, what is the police force in its entirety dealing with? Because I, I'm not sure they've dealt with such ever, you know, that their men have been gone down, you know, in the service of their duties on the road or whatever. It must be hard for them, but then no matter what, also you, they need to know how to deal with this and not then allow themselves, allow the politicians to, 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 to just um, overshadow the whole thing and take charge. Because that's what happened, and I believe that that's where the mistake happened, and that's why we are where we are. Because if they had taken charge as they needed to, and know that this is their own shoe, they need to be the leader, they need to take charge, and everybody follows suit, I don't think we would have been where we are. You know, they dropped the ball on that part one, and I just hope they will make it better um, as we go forward. Because this has not even started much more ended, you know. We, we still... You know, there's so many great areas. We still don't know the direction where we're going to go with all this, this this whole case in regards to the fallen soldiers and the one in the hospital, their families, their friends, you know, their associates, and the nation as, as a whole. These are officers in uniform. They were not in their houses when this happened. They were in uniform on the road on duty. So this is a Gambian, you know, issue. This is a Gambian tragedy. And everybody, everybody has a stake in this. And uh, we cannot, we cannot um, get past it if we are divided. And we're not divided on anything but on political lines. Yeah. Like seriously, it's sad. It's sad. It is sad, and it and it's important for them to understand. I've always said that. The Gambia is not made of just two political parties. The Gambia is made of so many political parties and independent people also. Sometimes there should be those considerations, but it's so unfortunate sometimes um, how we go through we go through this. Yeah, but uh, hopefully we'll get some updates before the end of the day. Um, we'll get in touch and like once again, thank you so much for everything. We appreciate the efforts you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, that was Nene Frida Gomez. Um, we want to thank her, like I said. Barbara Karsi said, thank you for sending us stars. We appreciate you. Um, so this is the update. I don't know if I can do any more of this. Um, Nene is not optimistic as to whether they will be, um, she, she's not as sure if they will be let go today because the courts are closed right now. Um, um, what happens now? I don't know. if. If they are not charged right now, they are not charged, um, the consulting, is, if they are going to leave them, it's going to be just bail them, let them go and maybe charge them tomorrow or keep them till tomorrow, maybe charge them. I don't know what, what it is, what is it going to be? We don't know. Uh, and guys said, we are not divided on political lines because of politics, as ideas and programs. We are divided on personalities. You, you might be right as well. You might be right. You might be right. Um, but I think at this point uh, in time, uh, the entire nation is grieving. The entire nation is uh, worried. It's, it's, we are all concerned about what happened to the to the foreign soldiers. So I think that is something that we we can all come together as 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 a people and and, and sympathize and and seek for justice for these foreign uh, police officers who swore to protect us when, whilst we're sleeping. So um, I think that is one thing that every Gambian uh, uh, believe in. And I think that is one thing that every Gambian, um, you know, showed when this thing happened. So I think um, if there's anything that we, we, we were united on is the fact that this act that, was, that took place was wrong and is uncalled for and is acceptable and just we deserve justice for the victim. So I think that is one thing that every Gambian um, were united on. So I think it would have been a great opportunity as a nation to, to heal together and also have a national dialogue on these issues. Because at the end of the day, it is important for us to, um, to come together as a people and have these kind of conversations. But I think, just like Nana said, I think a lot of people also believe that this uh, arrest is like more of a distraction to the main issue because these people are politicians. So when you arrest them, you know, people tend to think it's being politicized, even if it is not, that's what is going to be, people are going to be thinking. And then those politicians, their supporters are also making 
their own and about issues from the from the other end and then what when that happens what happens is this the the entire destruction is taken away from the main if you look at the coverages that are happening you know it's more of what is happening to these politicians uh, more than what really happened um, in the incident. So I think these are things also uh, communication-wise people should learn from. But again, um, people have different uh, ways of communicating. And I think um, it's, it's important that people, uh, we also bring this out. Things, the, in, when things like this happen, we, we also have to be able to come out and speak up and tell our people what is happening and what, what needs to be said. So. Um, I'm glad that the, the 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 police did their briefing and briefed us, but since then we have not had anything. So, Sadio, I think um, Sadio, I think I need to call you. Can I call you, Sadio? I think I need to call you. I just because I wanted some clarifications on certain things. I'm gonna call the lawyer, Sadio. This one I can call, and I don't even need to take permission. If you are not in court, though, if you are not in office, I should be able to call you. Let me check because I just need clarification on um, on you know on something because these things are important Nyangai, let me call nyang quickly before i i, I call sadio i'm going to call nyang because these things are sadio i will call you let me uh, let me know before i get to nyang Jai whether i should be able to uh, call you and then again thank you very much for sending us stars you know Saedara, um, and others uh, let me know uh, thank you so much for uh, sending us stars we appreciate your support i've always said that um stars bring us money so if you send us stars you are directly uh um you're directly sending us money so thank you very much for sending us stars hey Nyang. good afternoon Nyang, welcome to the program thank you so much fatu um the last word you said i think is the missing link Hmm. This is a national tragedy, and the last time it, it happened was in the 80s with the late Eku Mahoney, when he was shot by Mustafa Danso. Hmm. Eku Mahoney was a field force officer at Macau. Wow. And he was killed by a civilian uh, called Mustafa Danso. Hmm. And basically, this is not the first time it happened in the Gambia. Hmm. So it's not a first. Okay. I think people... Yeah, I think people like us... Who who wouldn't know because what? When were we born, right? But so he was full. About age. It's about history. I was about eight, nine years old. I was about. I don't want to say how old I was, but I okay. I didn't know. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, yeah. What the Gambia needs right now is healing, and the healing we need cannot come from anywhere else but the leadership of the country. Mm -hmm. This is about Gambia. Mm -hmm. It's not about politics. It's not about tribes. Mm -hmm. It's not about social mm -hmm. or economic um, orientation. It's mm -hmm. all about national pride, mm -hmm. national sacrifice, because those police officers sacrifice mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. in the interest of the greater good of society. Mm -hmm. So their legacy will be clouded mm -hmm. if we take the wrong step mm -hmm. in terms of trying to find a resolution mm -hmm. to this matter. Yeah. I urge the police mm -hmm. to do one thing and one thing alone. Mm -hmm. Let justice guide their actions. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, mm -hmm. they need to respect the rule of law. Okay. And respecting the rule of law is making sure that we don't abuse the judicial process. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by abusing the judicial process? Mm -hmm. If you arrest someone on a Friday, mm -hmm. knowing that you are not going to do any investigation Saturday mm -hmm. or Sunday, it would have been prudent, fair, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. wait till Monday and arrest them. And yes, mm -hmm. the state has the right to arrest anybody at any time, provided that there is articulable, reasonable suspicion to go after a citizen. Mm -hmm. But equally, we have a constitution that guarantees us rights. Mm -hmm. We are guaranteed rights yeah. by our constitution, and that's what makes us a sovereign people. Mm -hmm. And these rights should be respected first and foremost mm -hmm. by the people who enforce laws. Mm -hmm. And those are the police officers mm -hmm. of the state. Yeah. And keeping someone over 72 hours mm -hmm. without giving them a speedy hearing a speedy access to a trial mm -hmm. defeats the purpose of a democratic dispensation. 
Mm-hmm. So this is not the first time, like Nana said. Mm-hmm. And the problem is the culture, the mm-hmm. public service culture of mm-hmm. this country. Mm-hmm. It has been happening during Jame days, mm-hmm. and guess what? Mm-hmm. It became the norm, mm-hmm. not the exception. Okay. And this should be the exception and not the norm. It only on the very, very, you know, strange circumstances mm-hmm. that people should be kept, you know, over, you know, mm-hmm. over 72 hours. But mm-hmm. we should always make sure that the rule of law is respected mm-hmm. so that people will see equity and fairness. Because mm-hmm. if you look at the scales of justice, yeah. it's blindfolded. Mm-hmm. And that means justice mm-hmm. is neutral, mm-hmm. number one. Yeah. And if you look at the scales of justice, it's balance. Mm-hmm. And that balance must always yeah. be adhered to. And that's the responsibility of the law enforcement um, officers, i.e. the police, the paramilitary, whoever mm-hmm. is having access to private citizens and denying them their rights. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so regarding the, um, now we know that um, it's going to be 72 hours since uh, these people, I know you and I are not lawyers, but the general um, perception is uh, after 72 hours, they're either charged, bailed, or let go, right? Uh, it's already 72 hours because they were, they were invited around 4.30, it's already 5.30. And we have been told they came earlier on and brought in some charge sheets and uh, did advise Savali and Bio that these are things that, you know, they wanted them to sign. And their lawyers were advised against signing that document because to them, they believe is consenting to what they did. And they told them we're going and coming back. And they still have not returned, um, meaning they don't know if they, because the courts are closed right now. So if they're going to take them to court, that is not possible today, meaning they might sleep another night at the police stations. And 72 hours have already clocked out. What, well, as a basic. A perception, Fatou, uh, I, a reality, and that reality is entrenched in our constitution, is mm-hmm. a constitutional provision. Yeah. Yeah. And a constitution is as sacred as the Bible or the Quran. Mm-hmm. It is the guiding document that guides how the Gambia um, acts, mm-hmm. how we live mm-hmm. together harmoniously in a society, and how we should conduct our businesses. Yeah. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. the, the lacking tool here is what you call M&E, monitoring and evaluation. Mm-hmm. There is no institution in this country that monitors and evaluates mm-hmm. what the police does. What do I mean by that? You have what you call key performance indicators. Mm-hmm. If there was a department mm-hmm. that will look at all the arrests that were made by the police for a period mm-hmm. and see whether the police are in, you know, they're in order as it relates to the provision. Mm-hmm. If not, mm-hmm. what they need to do is find ways and means mm-hmm. to make sure that the police yeah. are in order to make sure that people are not kept over and beyond what the constitution says. Mm-hmm. Because if we don't respect our constitution, yeah. we might as well say that we don't respect our statehood. Mm-hmm. Because the constitution is what guarantees our statehood. Mm-hmm. And right now, anyone who flouts what the constitution says is in effect mm-hmm. flouting the ideals of what makes us the people called the Gambia mm. or Gambians. Yeah. So, and, and I, 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 I want to uh, public uh, government officials are the biggest peddler of um, fake news. You have said this several times. I remember when, when we, when we, when we were had, when we were doing Kirfata together and you keep saying this, and I think you and Madi Jovate have always said this, but um, I wanted to bring your attention to the thing, because the reason why I'm bringing this up, I just saw the, um, the statement by the, um, the statement by Gambia for All condemning uh, Sankara's interview, and they came up with a very strong, strong statement. I don't think even UDP statement was this strong. Um, they called him out and they, they, they were very strong and the wordings are really, really, really strong. 
as to what Sankara said on coffee time. Um, number one, uh, when Sankara came, uh, when he brought uh, the, the linkage between the alleged um, um, the killer to Brikama, working at Brikama Area Council, which was debunked by the council, and also saying he was at the UDP rally, which turned out that the picture that there was being circulated um, allegedly is Chairman Davos' um, um, security detail. And then uh, the chair, the, the, the UDP already started, then, then started saying, you see, they're trying to link us to this. But again, for even the um, government spokesperson to say that, and then the national security advisor to say, no, this guy works for a local government. That miscommunication between the two, to two organs, government spokesperson saying this, and then the national security advisor saying a different thing, and also and it coming out to be that honestly the guy was not working at Brikama Area Council. How would you um, explain stuff like that in a, in a, in a tragic situation like this? Well, first, I think um, we need to separate Mr. Sankare, the individual, mm -hmm. and the government spokesperson. But he was speaking on his behalf as government spokesperson. I'm coming there. Okay, okay. So Mr. Sankare, mm -hmm. the individual, can be opinionated and he can make inferences based on what he believes that mm -hmm. his personal prerogative. Mm -hmm. But when he stands at the um, podium talking or on any show, he is no longer a private citizen. Mm -hmm. He is talking as an official person on you know, whose responsible, the responsibility is to brief people on behalf of what the state says. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, mm -hmm. he should have been briefed by security personnel. Mm -hmm. So what he has said, mm -hmm. maybe it was a faulty intel. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by faulty intel? Yeah. He must have been briefed. He must have been briefed. That's what I said, yes. So whoever briefed him, yeah. briefed him wrongly. Mm -hmm. So for me, I believe as we go on, we learn. Mm -hmm. And when we learn, we should try not to repeat the same thing. Because mm -hmm. if you do the same thing every day and expect a different result, mm -hmm. mind you, something is fundamentally wrong with you. And this is not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third. Then it means something is wrong with our communication systems internally as a state. Mm -hmm. Is the security talking to different organizations within the system, i.e. government? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, mm -hmm. then something is wrong with the intel. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, mm -hmm. is the spokesperson just talking based on his opinion? Mm -hmm. And from the look of things, there has been a lot of inconsistencies and divergence from what he said okay. and the press conference delivered by the Deputy Inspector General of Police and some of the sister institutions. Okay. I therefore believe, mm -hmm. once again, mm -hmm. this is a criminal matter. The people who should take charge and be the lead mm -hmm. are the Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. Government spokesperson can talk about many and you know a whole lot of things, but this is not one thing he can talk about. And that's why in places like America, you have security cl clearance. Mm -hmm. And with a security clearance, you can be briefed adequately in terms of what happened mm -hmm. so that when you go out to talk to the public, mm -hmm. they will believe you. Right now, we have a crisis of confidence. And this crisis of confidence, the government may be working too hard to tell us the truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. But because of these incidences, mm -hmm. whatever they do and whatever they say, People we not... take it with a pinch of salt. salt. And that is not good because we must have trust and faith in the system, mm -hmm. in the government, and in the officials that deliver messages on behalf of the government. Now, going forward, what, what should we, what should be the way forward? I, you know, number one, in assuring people that uh, right information will be given and also uh, assuring the Gambian people, like you said, this only happened when some, you know, let's say a half of the population were not even born, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people are scared, people are worried, people are 
concern. What kind of communication do you think government should be doing going forward? Well, there's two issues here. There is a procedural problem and there is a security problem. Mm -hmm. On the security problem, I'm not worried, I'm not bothered. For me, this was an isolated incident, not a systemic problem. We don't have a systemic security problem. I'm sorry, a lot of people may disagree, mm -hmm. but in terms of murder, mm -hmm. killings, I'm not talking about you know crimes, theft, and other things, but in terms of killings, mm -hmm. especially with killing uniform men, mm -hmm. we don't have a systemic problem. This mm -hmm. was more like a random act of violence against men in uniform, men and women in uniform. What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. First, we need to further protect the people we put out there because times have surely changed. Yeah. You know, if you understand Gambia, mm -hmm. police started with buttons, just mm -hmm. a wooden stick. Yes. Then they moved to the AK-47. Mm -hmm. I think we need to arm them better. Mm -hmm. AK-47 is not a policing weapon. Mm. That's the first thing we need to understand. They need pistols. They mm. need body armor. They need helmets. Mm -hmm. They need proper lighting, mm -hmm. especially people who are put out in checkpoints. I've seen recently that the police are doing a good job giving their men good reflective uniforms at night. That's mm -hmm. good for public safety. But public safety goes beyond identifying the policeman that stands at the checkpoint, mm -hmm. but adequately giving that police officer enough resources to execute the duties and functions that they are prescribed to do. But equally, mm -hmm. I think um, at the same time, Gambia to an extent suffered from police brutality. Yeah. And police brutality, to me, is always you know, responded with vigilantism, vigilante justice, more yeah. justice. Yeah. If people are aggrieved mm -hmm. and not much is being done to find a resolution, people will opt for different means yeah. to find redress for their problems. <laughs> so what we need is if police officers are found wanting, I'm not even talking about murder because that's too extreme, yeah. but just physical violence. Yeah. The law must take its course. And I know of several incidents that have happened in the past. And as general public, we didn't know what the resolution was or the final conclusion. Remember those police and paramilitary officers yeah. that were recorded tear gassing people. I just saw the video. That's what I wanted to bring to your attention. I just saw the video now on Facebook. That's one incident that the public didn't know the outcome. Yeah. There is other video circulating long time ago at Brikama Area Council, um, in Brikama, sorry, mm -hmm. when there was a riot and this police officer was beating the hell out of some people. We have seen videos around Africa mm -hmm. where people were beaten during immediately after the elections. Yes. So it's the duty of the police to show to the public that we have found, we have, you know, find these people wanting or we have at least done something and here are the final outcomes. And once that is done, there will be confidence. And that's why I said we have a crisis of confidence. Mm -hmm. So if we resolve that, I think the trust will increase and Gambia will be in a better position. But right now, mm -hmm. we need leadership and the leadership we need is to bring Gambians together. Because what's happening is not something we know. What's happening is on Gambia, and what's happening needs a resolution. And the resolution goes beyond finding the killer or slash killers. The resolution is making sure we move towards a just and equitable society as it relates to policing, law enforcement, and judicial dispensation. Nyang, I want to come to something that you touch on very important, very important. As I scrolled through my phone, on, um, on the other phone, I saw a video that's posted by somebody where the police officers were celebrating uh, when they tear gas members of the opposition and they, it was gone viral. And when that, I remembered when that video came out, 
uh, the police command put out a statement on their page and said they have invited these police officers, they have put them on leave, and in the, they will update the public on what happened, right? And this was commended by the party and everybody to say, at least the police are doing the right thing. Now, nobody was updated on the status of those police officers, whether they were you know, prosecuted, whether they were sacked, whether they were suspended, whatever happens. The statement just came and nothing happened. Nobody knew. And there were also incidences where uh, even the Yankuba Dabo case, you know, tear gas was thrown. I don't know what really led to that, but that happened. And I think that was even the reason why when the citizens feel at some point that somebody is doing something to me and I don't have the powers to be able to beat that person back, right? But the only power that I have is to let people know this is what they're happening. It has gone to the point where there's this relationship between especially the UDP and the police. They believe that the police always, uh, wherever they gather, they, they, they treat them wrongly, they treat them bad, and they are always on the defense when it comes to the police. At that point, when you have that kind of relationship between the police and the citizen, what is what can that cause? What can that cause? Because these are things that as a, as a, as, a, as a community we need to work on. We need to have. I remember before it was the army, right? We never had a good relationship with the army, and when the change of government happened, we all the army went back. And I I remember General Drame one time we met at this program. He said you would not see the army again we have gone back to the barracks and the, the, the army has stayed back we had a relationship now the afro afro barometer survey now is showing some a lot of confidence between the people and the army because the army had stayed back but the relationship now has become the police and the people now if at some point the pool the people believe that the police are always coming after them and the police feel like these set of people are always causing trouble. So whenever we go to their functions, we also have to be aggressive. I don't, I'm not specifically saying that's what they're saying, but it seems like anytime there's an encounter, there's issues. So when there's that kind of relationship between the population and the law enforcement, that is not good. What should be done to, um, you know, what should be done to avoid that? Because if this continues, it doesn't make sense for, 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 for the police and also it's not good for the citizens because we don't, they will say we don't trust them and the police say they always bring violence. So when we go to them, we will make sure uh, we, we bring it to them. And they will also say, well, they always bring violence. You know, that relationship there, mainly so say all the time, police solo and these people. So that is not good for the society. Yeah. Well, you're right. The problem here is Gambia didn't transition from the Second Republic to a Third Republic. One, because we don't have a constitution yet. Secondly, the Public Order Act, which is a nuisance to the rights of the citizenry, is still festering. Seven years almost into the new dispensation. These are things that we need to do. And also, I think the culture of policing didn't change from the last republic to this republic. Why? Mm. The very people who used to brutalize are still within the system and they are not retrained and retooled. So the problems still persist because the very people who used to say, you made a comment and I will just want to, you made a statement and I just want to rectify a little bit on that. Mm. We don't have a problem with the police. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with the paramilitary. Okay. What the army used to be mm -hmm. in the Second Republic is what the paramilitary is becoming in this dispensation. I think police officers are the most cordial, most respectful, and cooperating public servants that I have seen. It's I the PIU. Yes, we need to be specific. Yes. 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 From the traffic light. Yeah. And I've made a lot of Mm -hmm. and people who stand by the traffic light to a point they're like family mm -hmm. if you look at the police officer at Kotu Ture his name is Ture yes I've never seen a friendly police officer like him since I saw a, um, a guy called Silo Bula he's no longer a police officer 
Yeah. So yes, police officers are great people, mm -hmm. and they're doing a great service to the state. But unfortunately, the culture of policing, which they have inherited over the past years, mm -hmm. especially from '94 to 2016, mm -hmm. that is the problem. And we haven't done much to change that system. And changing that system starts with changing and redefining how we police, mm -hmm. how the police relate with the communities that they police, and also making sure that there are processes within the policing framework. Any institution should have what you call standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. And a standard operating procedure, a manual, will tell you if you arrest a person, yeah. you need to do one, two, three. But no, we, we should not stop there. We should have, just like we have the accountant general that goes and look after government's money or the auditor general, we should also have an institution that measures the public service delivery of these institutions, including the police. I've always been saying one thing, who is policing the, the police. police that's policing us? You kept saying this, yeah. This is the fundamental problem that this country is faced with. And I don't envy the IG because he has a huge, you know, human resource to take care of. Mm. They are not motivated because of pay scale. They are not motivated because they lack the basics of living, i.e. proper shelter. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, let's face the facts. It's just in the past four or five years or seven years that we are seeing professionalism being inculcated into our police, whereby we having police officers wanting to further their education. Mm -hmm. Great, bravo, I'm happy for that. Yeah. But if you look at the rank and file of the police, they like the basics that should give them not a comfortable, but a normal human life that is dignified. If that is not provided, guess what? The culture of the police will change, not only for them to be corruptible, mm -hmm. but also for them to be subservient to the powers that be. And what do I mean by that? We always see that the party in power mm -hmm. tends to have favorable um, relationships with the police, mm -hmm. i.e. when they want to march, they go ahead and do it. When they want to have their rallies, no one says no. Mm -hmm. So. But if we have standard operating procedures that spell out who can have what, when they have it, what do we need to do, there will be impartiality. So we need a systems overhaul. The Gambia is crying for a new Gambia, but a new Gambia cannot be born when the habits of old are persisting seven years into the new dispensation. So. Not much has changed from 94 to 2016, if you compare that from 2017 to date. People will tell you we have more freedoms. Yeah. I won't say that. I, I think freedoms that we enjoy are highly discretionary. Yeah. And I can enjoy it, someone else may not enjoy it. And that's not what the law wants. And that's not what we want as a people. So going forward, I think, um, more training needs to happen. You know, someone like me, I've been calling for a comprehensive civil service reform. Yeah. And this comprehensive civil service reform, that's why when I saw the judicial um, review for judges, mm -hmm. I wasn't happy because that's not the only place. We have seen piecemeal reforms in the civil service in different sectors, and that's not helping. Okay. The police officers, the teachers, the immigration officers, the drug law enforcement officers, their biggest problem is housing. The amount of money they are paid, they cannot even pay rent. So we have a fundamental problem, and security is one of the most precious assets that the country has, and the deliverable of our security must be very, very, very um, top-notch. If not, the lives of the citizenry will be compromised, and that's where we are. But let's do hope that with, with um, the IG, he will see that his human resource base are demotivated, they are under-trained, and 
the best and the brightest are not coming to the force because it's not a place you want to be. It's an employment of last resort for over 70% of the people in the force. It's an employment of force resort for some, but overwhelming majority going to the police is an employment of last resort. So motivation is not there, and the role of the IGP is not to police. The role of the IGP is to make sure that his team are highly motivated, ready to deliver first-class service to the citizenry of this country. Finally, Nyang, because I have one lawyer uh, to bring, but I just wanted to ask this question, because um, you mentioned it briefly, and the, after the incident when um, the gun shooting happened, the next day the National Assembly, a lot of the National Assembly members were calling for arming the police officers. Now, I see a lot of human rights defenders saying, hold on, hold on, we are all being a little emotional here, because considering the situation we are in right now, whenever we get in contact with the, the PIU, to be specific, let's not say police, there's always either people are being tear gas or something is happening. Now, considering that situation, arming the police, is that the right thing to do? Uh, you know, when people have guns and they have access to it, they will use it. Do you think it's the right thing to arm the police as we speak, on t or should we wait until we believe the reforms have taken place, the police are motivated, and we have a good uh, relation, like police uh, community relationship, and encourage community policing? Or would you just recommend um, arming the police at this stage? Well, I think um, public policy should not be reactionary, meaning just because an incident happened our policy prescription should be in line to resolve what has happened. Mm -hmm. I think Gambians too often mm -hmm. tend to react rather than have deliberate actions that will guide how we live. Mm -hmm. If we look at what's happening, mm -hmm. I don't think the police need to be armed, but those that are mounting checkpoints need to be adequately protected in terms of their public safety to make sure nobody hits them. But also, they are out in the open. They need to have adequate, when I say adequate, resources, mm -hmm. not only weapons, but mobility, mm -hmm. to make sure that they can move when something happens. Let's say it was a drive-by shooting. Mm -hmm. Who is going after that car? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody. Because the police that are at the checkpoint don't mm -hmm. have mobility. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a country, Mm -hmm. We need to start defining what is of paramount interest to us. Our education, health and security, or our travel, pajeros, and per mm -hmm. So the little resources that Gambia has, if we reprioritize them, mm -hmm. I think we will have a society that is living in peace and not living in fear. If we take our resources and pay our police better, we will have a motivated group of police officers who are willing to serve and serve properly and diligently. If we take our resources and retrain, re the police, I think crime will go down, the society will be better, and, you know, in conclusion, Gambia will become a better place. But the way I see things, we pay a lip service to national security. What, I, what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Just go to the budget mm -hmm. and look at what's being spent yep. in terms of capital infrastructure and capital items. Mm -hmm. Capital items meaning equipment that the police need. Mm -hmm. We're living in 2023. Gambia doesn't have a forensic lab. It says a lot. Yeah. Almost a 2.6, 2.7 million population. Mm -hmm. You don't have a good forensic lab. Yeah. So a lot of people are not going to jail because we can't catch them. We don't have a good fingerprinting information system for tracking criminals and registering criminals and sex offenders, etc., etc. Why? Because we are not investing into these things. And so long as we are not doing it, it means we're paying a lip service to security. I feel sorry for the IG. I mean, if you look at the way traffic is in Gambia right now, it's chaotic. Chaotic not because the police are not trying, but we lack enforcement. People are not being punished for breaking the law because the police are overwhelmed.
to we need to have systems, cameras, and other things that will help in law enforcement. So I think um, sometimes when things happen, we should look at the bright side. It's a dull moment for Gambia, and my condolences to all. And the bright side is it's time for us to refocus on the priority of national security and making sure that we sleep well at night because the police out there making sure that we sleep well at night and not properly and adequately protected. So I do hope that, you know, in our subsequent budget, we find ways and means to make sure that our police officers, our teachers, our firemen, our nurses, these are the foundations of building a society are well enumerated and they're well in terms of their zeal. I mean, without a good zeal, their performance will be lackluster. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nyangai. And, you know, it's good to have these conversations just to, um, to, to bring to terms the situations, what is happening, and for, to just update people as to what is happening. I'll be back again. I hope we can catch up again and, you know, talk about more of these issues. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, and condolences to the fallen people. Yeah. And on behalf of every Gambian, we say a great thank you to our police. All right. Thank you so much. Nyan. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was Nyang Jai, and I think, um, you know, um, Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Sajo Dabo for the stars, my sister Nanding. Thank you for the stars. And also we want to thank, um, I think I saw one CB. Thank you also for for the stars. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to call, um, vouching for the Gambia. Okay, somebody sent me something, vouching for the Gambia. Okay, so somebody sent me this, but who is this person? Let me see. Um, okay, okay, so uh, um, this is, I'm going to read it because I'm live, so if something comes up, I'm going to read it. So this is coming from uh, Boabukar Sankano, the deputy, um, deputy, since I'm, I'm live, so whatever happens, I'm just going to put it out. Uh, Boabukar Sankano is the deputy government spokesperson. Thank you, Ibrahim Ajo, for your stars. We appreciate them. I'm going to read it. Vouching for the Gambia government spokesperson, Ibrahim G. Sankare. We'll publish it on the paper right now, but I'm going to read it. Since I read the GFF statement live, I'm going to read this also. Um, it's like um, President Baro Temporal. Oh, no, sorry. What happened? Why did he delete that? Oh, okay. Um, he, okay, it's deleted, so he will send another one. Okay, I hopefully he will send it. I was going to. This is coming from the government, deputy government spokesperson, but uh, apparently it's deleted, so he will call back. He will send it again. When he sends, maybe there was some mistake, and I will, I will read it. Now, let me call. Um, I wanted to call a Gambian lawyer here, but I'm not able to, but I think Sajo, who, you know, is a lawyer. He operates in, in, in the U.S., but he should be able to just give us some guidelines as to the situation we are talking about. So let's see if he's available here and then we will be able to have him. Hey, hey, Sajo. Oh, hey. I'm eating into your time though, sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to the program. <laughs> uh, thank you. So Sajo, we yes, we're gonna be brief, like yeah. two minutes, right? Um, so I just wanted to have a lawyer's perspective. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you've been following, especially my first live feed, uh, where we spoke to Nene and uh, Mr. Mane from UDP. Uh, they are at the police. Apparently, you know, today, 72 hours shoot clock for Sabali and uh, Biosonko. But, um, and um, they, they, they were supposed to be uh, either bailed or charged. Um, so from my understanding, they came with something, apparently that was the charge sheet, where they were charging them for threatening public officials. So, uh, and hope now um, they wanted them to sign, but Sabali and lawyers uh, advised against signing that, and they didn't sign, and the police said they were going back to consult and come back. So I know right now the 72 hours has clubbed. What happens now? What is, what would, you, generally, what do you think uh, should happen? The police had up to 72 hours. That is within their right, right? Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, under, uh, I think, 
seven constitutional uh, provisions, usually anyone who is arrested or detained, there is a requirement that you bring them before a court with all deliberate speed in mm -hmm. any event not more than 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And then uh, those provisions are mandatory mm -hmm. whether the person is detained or not. Mm -hmm. the, the, the only uh, distinction is if someone is arrested, mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement has a requirement within three hours to inform them of the charges or even if they are detained in fact, you mm -hmm. have to let them know. Yeah. Now, um, I think they were arrested sometimes last week, I'm not so exactly, but assuming, let's say, the 72 hours clock is running today, mm -hmm. and then uh, unless Gambia is like here where you have uh, judges, with what we call arraignment judges, even at night, mm -hmm. to make sure, you know, someone is brought before a judge within those 24 hours, mm -hmm. and then uh, the only thing they could do in order to protect themselves and then make so, uh, supposedly, let's say, if they are... Uh, Derived any evidence from uh, during those custodial interrogation to protect those things, I will release them. And then, uh, since you wanted to go file charges, or so if the charges are filed, you could file it, and then they would uh, appear in court, release them, and then uh, that would just stop that. You don't want it to blow that deadline, right? But uh, if they are formally arrested, because I'm not aware of this thing, but let's say they are formally arrested and then 72 hours is about to. Uh, Elapsed, and then there is no way you could find that information with court to the those charging document. Mm -hmm. I think uh, police should have uh, legal advisors within them. They would look at it and then advise that just release the individuals. And then if you file your information in court, they would come and then ask. And I think we can all agree that uh, neither uh, uh, nor family would be uh, a flight risk, meaning that you know, oh, if we let them go, they would run out of the country. I don't think uh, that's an issue here. Oh, even the argument, maybe they would be a danger to the public. I don't think uh, that would be relevant here. Yeah. But uh, I don't know why they need to sign anything. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's service because you never know what's going on uh, in there. But usually, uh, if the state wanted to charge you, you don't need to consent to that. You know, it's done basic information system. You know, they will file the bill of indictment. And then uh, if it's like here, if, it's a, if you file the information system, and then for cases that are misdemeanors, you know, we don't do any prelims. And then for cases where it's a felony and the information is filed, it's already the criminal preliminary hearing. And then what that means is to test the legal sufficiency of the complaint to see mm -hmm. whether there is probable cause that the crime in fact is uh, committed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if not, the cases, you know, the charges get dismissed. And then for certain jurisdictions, of course, you know, U.S., we have both. Where there's a grand jury system, usually if, if you want to charge someone with a felony, a grand jury has to sit and, you know, for the truth bill in order for you to indict them. But Gambia has an information system just like Wisconsin, right? So usually when those charges are filed and then uh, just get filed with the court, maybe they are serving them with papers. And then uh, they can refuse to accept service or if they have legal uh, personnel, they will give it to them. But you, you, you cannot stop an indictment because you don't want to serve. Uh, you don't want to sign, but uh, I don't think that's the issue. Uh, I hope that's not it. Maybe it has to do with something else, or maybe they, 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 it has to do with other paperwork that indicated that they said something, and then maybe there's the disagreement on that, and then you know they wouldn't uh, sign that. But uh, for cases like it's the only thing that I could not understand from my own uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. At least, uh, well, I don't know whether they work weekends. But uh, if you know you are running out, you know, the clock is running on you, why not do this in the morning? At least you have to have an idea mm -hmm. that you are going to file charges or not. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you should at least anticipate very well. And then two, unless if the individuals are talking to them actively, mm -hmm. and then I don't know. But uh, my, my thinking would be for, 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 for someone who is of... Uh, Savali's background in terms of education and esposo, or yeah. even Sonko. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the question becomes, when they were initially invited, because if you looked at the, the, the constitutional provision, mm -hmm. it speaks of detention and then those who are arrested, those mm -hmm. 72 hours requirement, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Gambia, I know, I know I wrote about it, I said the you know, police would use this euphemism as, you know, invitation for, for, for questioning. Mm -hmm. The question becomes, if someone voluntarily comes to you and then they are free to leave, mm -hmm. they are not under detention mm -hmm. and then they are not under arrest. So the clock is not triggered. Mm -hmm. It's like a voluntary interaction between law enforcement and citizens. Mm -hmm. So nothing literally happened there. Yeah. So we don't know that. That's why I, I, I always keep saying, if police invite you, why not invite them to your office if they want to talk to you, you know, in a neutral ground. But if they tell you no, we want 
to bring you in. At least at that point, you know, you are detained. They are not formally arresting you, but at least they are detaining you. And then they will tell you our laws require that if you get detained within three hours for them to tell you in a language that you understand the reason for their detention, right? Yeah. They could explain to you, look, we are investigating a crime and then we believe that you might have information to provide us for this crime. And then as part of that advice, so within the three hours, they should tell you too, you also have a right to cancel, right? Yes. So for someone who is sophisticated, what I would think, they would already have lawyers on retainers or someone who is in fact an executive member in a political party. I would expect them to have, you know, a legal representative for that party. So if you invoke your right to cancel, if just like here and then even UK and then Gambia, you know, I stand to be corrected, but I don't think there is any rule that would allow law enforcement to talk to you once you invoke your right to cancel, which means the interview ceased. That voluntary questioning just ended police cannot talk to you without your lawyer being present. Yeah. And then the only time they can now re-engage that conversation, the only way police could sanitize that, you have to put a written waiver indicating that you're waiving your right to counsel and now you want to engage in talking. So this is where there's a lot of, uh, I, I don't know what the standard practice is in Gambia. It could be strategic. Some lawyers would want their clients to talk, thinking, you know, if you talk, you cooperate. Police would believe you and then find you credible about your explanation and let you go. I don't know. But uh, what I do know of uh, most people, especially uh, with this kind of sophistication, mm -hmm. you bring them, they're going to invoke their right to counsel. And once they do, the interview cease there, meaning now the police are in the dilemma. I'm engaging my right to counsel. I'm not talking to you. I want to go home. So two things could happen. Yeah. They tell you, no, you are not free to go. Which automatically change the situation into custodial mm. situation. Now you're in detention because it's called so of authority and inability to move. They don't have to tell you you are under detention or you are under arrest. The court looked at substance over form. Mm. You ask them, I don't want to talk to you, I want to leave. If they tell you no, you can't leave. At that point, you are under detention. So your clock starts running. And then, of course, they have to let you know why you were there within three hours as the law requires. So if you are not talking to them, and then before the 72 hours end, they have, a, you know, are uh, they in that, you know, cut 22. Mm. Either file charges, roll the dice, and then just file charges with what they don't know, or let you go and then conduct further investigation to see if they could have anything to bring the charges. And I think, you know, this depends on how lawyers approach the cases and then how our police, you know, would handle the cases. Because I think uh, there's this tacit understanding from my point of view, the way I observe things. Police and uh, legal practitioners engage in uh, these issues where they would call you for, for questioning. Mm -hmm. And then that call for questioning turns into custodial, you know, uh, interrogation mm -hmm. where someone is in effect in detention. And then they would have lawyers invoke that and then counsels would be coming in talking to the police, witness are writing cautionary statement, uh, 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 it's confusing. So yeah. it kind of blow the line. Yeah. Is it something that they were their right to counsel or uh, is the lawyer advising them to do it? I don't know. <laughs> so Sadio, my thing is, I remember one time we spoke when, when Bora was arrested and, you know, we spoke and, you know, you were telling me, but he, he was not charged. Why did he, why was he bailed and all the stuff? But the fact is, if you don't sign that bail, you still stay at that police station. So what do you do? Stay there continuously? They have not charged you. They said, Tamu natina e bail. What do you do? You still stay there or you no, just that's pack that's up and leave? That's, 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 the, that's the problem. One of two things would happen. Mm -hmm. Either our courts turn a blind eye or the executive refuse to enforce court orders and then it would put us in a different territory. But at least it will be clear, right? Yeah. And then let's say police invite you for questioning, yeah. an ordinary citizen, mm -hmm. and then you just talk your right to counsel, even if you don't have a lawyer, but let's say you just tell them I don't want to talk to you, mm -hmm. right? And then you don't want to talk, and then that's your right. They don't have to do anything. And then they're investigating a crime. If, if this is what people don't understand. That constitutional provision of 72 hours, mm -hmm. The law wanted to give the police the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. because they, there is a reasonable suspicion. It's a very low standard mm -hmm. that either you committed a crime or a crime of, is about to be committed. And mm -hmm. then the police, because their job is to enforce the law and then prevent crime prevention, mm -hmm. the law gives them that benefit of the doubt within that 72 hours to conduct investigation mm -hmm. either to affirm their suspicion mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. the Jesus Hospital there in Park. Oh, they dispel it. Okay. It's like a traffic stop. We call it a traffic stop here. Yeah. Police officer pull you over. You understand? Maybe you did a traffic infraction, right? You you forget to uh, signal, mm. or you 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 do uh you know you're pulling a speed limit. Mm. Once they pull you over, they approach you. You know why you pull over? You are speeding, and then they would ask for your license and registration because that's a traffic stop. And then they know now you have a traffic violation. While doing that, it's going to run your license. Everything could be checked, and then you're fine. You only be given a warning or a ticket. But at least that traffic stop terminated. It should be just brief for the purpose of terrorist stop. Anything beyond that you are facing, it becomes illegal detention. And then that's why most of those evidence that come after that they get disposed of. So the same thing applies to that. The only difference is our constitution is generous enough to give police 72 hours, like in a way you just have 24 hours, right? Yeah. If you detain somebody, you're going to bring them to court or you release them. You don't have to build it. There's no such thing as police bail here. The only thing is they will let you go, bring you to the court for the court to bail. Now, Gambia, what I can see happen, let's say police bring you over mm-hmm. before the 72 club came, mm-hmm. and then they made it clear to you, say, hey, you know, like, hey, father, we call you in the coming. They said, no, I don't want to come in. And they were like, now you have to come in, or we are coming to mm-hmm. arrest you. And then they bring you in, and they were like, right now we are not formally arresting you, but we are putting you under detention. But these 72 hours, they want to investigate this. And then you tell them, well, I'm not talking to you. Mm-hmm. The idea of police bail was, you know, designed in such a way. At that point, since you want to, you don't want to talk to them. And then if they, you know, make their assessment, you know, security assessment and priorities and understand that you are not a fly place, you are not a danger to the community, and they don't want to keep you there, frankly, you know, feeding you or providing for you, they could give you police bail within that 72 hours. That's all it's supposed to be. So, okay, look, the detention in order to detain you of 72 hours, we're going to build you. You could go and they will continue. When the 72 hours, you know, or like when they complete their investigation, they could either file charges or terminate it. But that bill also could not go in continuity. It doesn't work that way because you are not a suspect, no one formally charged you. But uh, I, I think uh, it would require a lot of training or litigation in court for courts to you know, explain some of these provisions. Because if someone doesn't want to talk to you and then you don't file charges, at the end of the 72 hours, you cannot bail that person because they are not under detention and you have to release them. Mm-hmm. Why would you bail me? I'm not going to sign any bill. And then you have to leave me go. If you don't, you file a habeas petition with the High Court. Mm-hmm. That should be the procedure. But the problem is most people would cave in. It would take another citizen who would challenge this kind of uh, detention for the courts to speak on it. Until then, it will continue as is right now. It will continue as it's right now. Yeah, Yeah. and I I hope the the Bar Association and other legal bodies, human rights bodies, will take this up and, you know, and and, and just get get, uh, judgments on these uh, cases. That way we have standards being set. Thank you very much, Sajjo. We're taking your time, and I know you are at work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, um, So a lot of people are saying, Melvin, can you text us on Kerfado? I know you blocked me. Personally, on my personal page, how my lan lala def, the block ma, man do my hulu akin, don't my block the yego moko, how my lan lala def. But I think you will be very good in this because you have a lot of experience, you know, Gambian law. So if you can text us on Kirfatu and, and I'll text you back so we can have you um, on. Um, and I think I wanted to make some clarification. I was reading a press release. Normally, the government spokes. Uh, Sankara is the deputy spokesperson. He sends us press release. So when the GFF, GFA's press release came, I read it on air. So I wanted to also read their press release, but I don't think he didn't want me to read. I think maybe they are re-editing it or something. That's what I think. So, because um, I'm live. So if something breaking break, breaking news or a press release comes in, it's just fair to, to give it this publicity. You know, we have what, over 800 people watching. So it will be good publicity for them. That was the reason. It was not like reading anything that was not right. It was more like a press release. So yeah, so um, let's, uh, if Melvin, uh, Melvin sends us, uh, my admin is, admin is watching. So admin, if Melvin sends a message, can you please send him my number? I think it will be good to have him on. Um, and then also get back and check on the uh, what is happening at Kairaba and PIU before we close. But I see Melvin making a lot of commentary on this, and I think 
he knows the system but also just like nena is saying people sign these things before they leave you know so um yeah so uh, so let's have melvin on why he blocked me i don't know what i did to him actually so i mean if can you check on the kirfa to um missing if melvin sent a message if he does send him send him my number uh so he can uh, he can join the program or else i can have him um yeah so let's see i think i we should have him on um please send him melvin let me just go to okay missing messages messages inbox and um, melvin has not yet sent sent a message so if he sends a message we will we will get back to him and, and, and have him on the show just to have his uh, reaction as well um okay let me refresh those are comments messages 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 no he hasn't yet sent the message maybe he's gone out but yes so melvin how can you call in send a message to kerfato send your message uh on kerfato and then we'll be able to send you a number to to call please he said he unblocked you why did he block me in the first place huh madam melvin la 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 def i'm sending you okay i just saw your message call me on on this number call me on this whatsapp i just sent you a message send me or send me a message on this whatsapp so <laughs> call this number yes on whatsapp yes on whatsapp and don't give the number out to please oh okay <laughs> yes why block me in the first place i'm so harmless i don't know why he blocked me that's my block there melvin the body i it's not mistake that yo how will melvin be fender oh yo you were not mistakenly blocked mark Danny blocked you deliberately remember i had to negotiate that for you <laughs> okay melvin Hello. melvin what needs to be clarified first? Why did you block me? I don't even know. You know me, like my papa is not Sarah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you go cuckoo. Sometimes you go cuckoo. Yeah, just ignore me. Okay, good. Thank you for coming <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I just wanted so, um, clarification. I know I see you uh, commenting on this uh, incident, uh, Sabali Sonko incident, where the police came and brought a charge sheet and wanted these people to sign. Um, what is your observation as to what really we explain here? Yeah, the, the, the first um, in the first place is I, I I don't know, but I'm I'm just shocked because um, whilst I was commenting, Nene just said to me that oh. Yes, indeed, they do that, and they try to make me sign a similar document. Mm. But I cannot make sense of that. I'm just thinking both Nene and um, and the gentleman that called um, are just kind of, they probably are, are, are talking about another document. But a charge sheet, what a charge sheet is, is the summary of the charges against an accused person that is actually taking before the court it's like an like an indictment mm -hmm. so an accused person cannot cannot sign that because that is what goes before the court mm -hmm. the charge sheet is the summary of charges basically so you cannot get an accused person to sign the charge sheet because that is what you take to the courts mm -hmm. so the two the two documents that an accused person can sign whilst in police detention mm -hmm. and that is one the witness statement which is the statement of the of the of the um the, the accused person mm -hmm. at the time probably a suspect that is before you're formally charged so in some instances you are asked you are asked to write your own witness you your own statement mm -hmm. and in some instances the police would actually write it out for you mm -hmm. they will read it read it for you um to make sure that it reflects everything that you have detailed and they would get you to sign it and i think in some instances tom print it that is your statement and the other doc yes mm -hmm. and then the other document that you must sign is the cautionary statement mm -hmm. 
this is where you're actually cautioned. This is where actually it, 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 it spells out the charge that you have been charged contrary to section blah, blah, blah of the criminal code, da, 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 and that. And these are the only two documents that an accused person must and can sign on the police detention in a police station. Mm -hmm. Because every other document that a person is coerced to sign, especially an accused person, can fundamentally be a blow to the prosecution's case. Because it can amount to you coercing and forcing that that witness, or, sorry, that accused person to sign a document for, in this instance, accepting liability of an offence that otherwise they did not do. Mm -hmm. So how can you sign a document in a police station accepting liability and then you go to court? What would you plead? How can you plead not guilty in court when you have already signed at the, at the level of the police a document establishing liability for the charges that have been preferred against you? Hmm. It's, absolutely, it's absolutely incomprehensible. So I do not understand how, where when it is not provided for under gambian law it is not provided for under the on, under the cpc or, or, or even the criminal procedure code where you would ask an accused person to sign and admit a crime wow in fact when you go to court mm -hmm. where where confession is obtained mm -hmm. in a police station mm -hmm. there's such a high threshold to determine the authenticity of that confession and the law specifically prescribes how mm. that confession must be taken down mm. if not even at the level of the court it could be set aside wow. so that is the first thing which i have a problem with mm. the second thing in my observation is the fact that both sabali and sonko were called in when I know Nyang Jai mentioned that this is not the first time that a police officer has been killed. Yes, it's, it is definitely not the first time. I mean, I know the case of, of Danso and stuff like that because mm. I'm familiar with it. Mm. However, in modern times, it is the first time that a, a, um, security officers were absolutely gone so down. dead yeah. in a public space mm -hmm. in, in, in such a long time mm -hmm. that it is for me it is the greatest assault on a security detail to have ever happened mm -hmm. and what i cannot understand mm -hmm. is that when when a situation like this happened so sabali and them wrote whatever they wrote on their posts yeah. on their facebook posts mm -hmm. this is a free country yeah. and people have the right to exercise free speech mm -hmm. however i must say that free speech there's a there's a fine line there's a distinction between free speech and hate speech mm -hmm. and incitement of violence yeah however when sabali wrote this post he did it publicly and every single sector in the Gambia, including the police, I'm sure, were privy of this post because it was shared numerous times. Yes. However, if you want to look at whatever Sabali did mm -hmm. and the way Sabali and Sonko were arrested or called in for questioning, in fact, I don't, I don't, I don't use the word invitation in Gambia. The police are inviting you because that basically means the police are calling you. The only reason why the police would say that they're inviting you is mm -hmm. because they don't want to put their own resources at their at, this, at their disposal. They don't want to use their petrol. They don't want to pay for a taxi to go and arrest you. Mm -hmm. They're basically telling you, come and be arrested. There is nothing like the police inviting you for questioning in Gambia. Okay. So that does not, it's, it's, it's non-existent. It's a redundant, a redundant phrase on the, on the, on the operational police procedure. Mm -hmm. Because once you're invited, and you go into a station you cannot even leave mm -hmm. you cannot even leave that station they will tell you you can't go so which basically means that you're under arrest yeah now what we have here is that allegedly from the police mm -hmm. based on the police press conference and based mm -hmm. on what the government spokesperson Sankara said on coffee time mm -hmm. we have we have an active shooter mm -hmm. that has confessed to the crime allegedly by the mm -hmm. police yeah now, in this instance, it is redundant to mm -hmm. call Sabali and Sonko mm -hmm. in connection to a crime mm -hmm. that the shooter has already confessed to that crime. Mm. Now, in the event, in the event that there was no active shooter, there was nobody in custody. Yeah, it would be it, it would be logical mm -hmm. for the police to invite Sabali and Sonko after such an incident mm -hmm. based on their pronouncements on their post okay it would be standard operations to invite them yeah to speak to sabali speak to song and say ah this and this and this is what you wrote on your post a few days ago mm -hmm. subsequent to your post 
so so and so has happened yeah this person has been shot that mm-hmm. person has been shot mm-hmm. what do you have to say yeah. what intelligence do you have what knowledge do you have mm-hmm. what, what what is your understanding of what has happened mm-hmm. has somebody contacted you you would ask the standard questions you would try to draw a nexus you would try to draw a link between the pronouncement of sabali and sonko between their between their facebook posts and what has happened that would be on the standard police investigation procedure yeah however the distinction in this matter is mm. that you have a person that has confessed to the crime wow and unless that person states in mm-hmm. their confession mm-hmm. that they had a dealing with sabali or that it was based on sabali's post that they went and attacked the the, the security personnel and shot at the at the at, at the, the police officers mm-hmm. or that sabali or that sabali conspired with somebody who contacted them mm-hmm. that would be the only reason that sabali can be invited in this instance because they have a confession and they have a, they have they have they have an accused person mm-hmm. in their custody who was actually who was allegedly i keep using the word allegedly, allegedly. who was allegedly confessed to the crime mm-hmm. so inviting sabali to the police station mm-hmm. inviting sonko where the the, the 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 accused person who is in their custody has not made any mention to mm-hmm. sabali or the united democratic party or to any political party mm-hmm. as per the police the police press briefing mm-hmm. for me it would be redundant for sabali and sonko to be arrested and the only logical plausible conclusion is that the police have a situation in their hands where the average gambians feel that the press release of the police the press conference of the police it brought in more questions than answers people are still asking questions people are confused people do not even believe that the person in custody is the active shooter that that that, that actually um 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 and did the, the 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 offenses that the police are are, are talking about so the, the average government does not believe that you just have to take a walk on social media and people are saying this guy looks like somebody that has a psychiatric problem so if if people are saying this and the police have such a a, a huge job in their hands I feel it is a distraction and they have succeeded in doing that that is why you and I are not talking about the the killing of police officers in broad daylight in the Gambia but we are now talking about the detention on or constitutional and or illegal detention of Sabali and Songo. Mm-hmm. So this is what the police have done. This is the, what they wanted to do and they have succeeded in diverting public attention to one of the most heinous crimes in modern times in Gambia. And that's exactly my my point. I I meant I, I raised this during my conversation with Nyanjai. If the police if um this like you said is one of the most serious attacks on our law enforcement and as a nation we should be diverting all attention to it and you know mourning with the the belief families and so in solidarity and support to the police but instead we are talking about arrest of politicians what kind of communication strategy do you think at this point the police should try to bring on to be able to redirect the conversation to this because we you know it's important you said something people don't believe anymore the, the thing is we should be we should have we should trust the work of the police if we don't trust that this investigation is fair is going to be fair what happens there to public confidence in, in relation to policing in the country poli poli um public confidence in the police Mm-hmm. and by extension the executive because we must establish that the police is part of the executive mm-hmm. there are three arms of government you have the executive you have the legislature and you have the judiciary yeah the police is part of the executive mm-hmm. the public confidence in the police and all the executive was shattered yeah. when you had the government spokesperson go on coffee time with peter gomez barely 48 hours after such a heinous crime had occurred in the gambia everybody was in a state of shock everybody was in a state of mourning and this person this individual and i must state here i know nyanjai said that we um we must divorce the individuality of the government spokesperson from his official function i'm sorry you cannot do that there are certain threshold that a certain official function that a person holds that an individual holds it's like president baro you cannot divorce the pronouncement of president baro as an individual or as an arsenal supporter and president baro as the president and commander in chief of the gambia you cannot do it 
we have a similar situation when um, 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 Minister Dabo tried to divorce um, um, lawyer Dabo tried to divorce his his comments, his political comments from his individual self and his person as a political leader, yeah. and we saw what that brought. So it is very difficult. Yeah. So there are certain positions that when you hold them, your pronouncement. And in this instance, the spokesperson of the government of the Gambia is by extension the mouthpiece of the president of the Republic of the Gambia. His pronouncements are a position of government. His pronouncements are government policy. Yeah. And yeah. policies. Mm. Because people believe that he is the mouthpiece um, of the government, mm. mouthpiece of the executive, and by extension, mouthpiece of the, the president. Mm -hmm. When he went on coffee time with Peter Gomez mm -hmm. and he spoke, this was he speaking on a position of knowledge. The average Gambian that listened to Sankare believed that Sankare has been adequately briefed. He, he, he had adequate intelligence yeah. to come out on coffee time with Peter Gomez on a public platform and mm. say the things that he said. Mm. Now, it was rather unfortunate that barely 24 hours, 48 hours after his pronouncement, the police came offered a press conference and systematically in a diplomatic way debunked every statement of Sankare. Yeah. Now, what, what happened was we were hearing and listening from two different quarters in one block, as in the executive. Yeah. When the police speak, that is the government speaking, they are part of the executive. Yes. When Sankara spoke, that is the government speaking, he's part of the executive. Yes. And now you and I are left with who do you believe amongst the two? Yeah. Was Sankare adequately briefed? Yeah. I personally believe that this gentleman was briefed. I don't think Sankare is insane enough to go on a pu public platform to say the things that he said. I believe time. I believe so too. I believe Sankare was briefed. Now, the question, yeah. The question that people should ask themselves is, mm -hmm. was Sankare deliberately misled? And mm -hmm. if Sankare was deliberately misled, you and I can adequately draw a conjecture that the government, the president, was misled. Hmm. And then it, it takes you down to a further question, who misled the president, who misled government? Wow. Was it the police? This is deep. Was it the SIS? Hmm. Who had the intelligence that government had that the police are now debunking and saying, Sankara said this person walked in the Brikama Area Council, it turned out that was false. Mm -hmm. Sankare said this person was seen in a court protest. He turned out this, that this thing was false. Mm. And now it leaves us Gambians in a position where we do not know who to trust. Yeah. Public confidence in the executive and the police has been totally eroded in this matter. Mm -hmm. And for me, the irony of it all is that this was one matter. This was one matter that could have unified the entire Gambia. I'm always on Facebook. I'm on every platform. Yeah. And when these police officers were shot, every Gambian, irrespective of religious affiliation, irrespective of political affiliation, irrespective of ethnic affiliation, people like us who are always critiquing the police, we were all standing in active solidarity with the police. Yeah. And that was a beautiful moment for the for, for, for the executive to unify the gambia to bring the gambia under one umbrella and and, and 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 actually allow the investigations to continue the way it should have continued mm. bring our credible source credible information to the public keep the public adequately informed keep the, pu the public adequately um, um satisfied in 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 terms of, of of receiving information that was crucial and key to their own safety reassure the gambians that you know what this is an event that has happened this is a one-off. It's under control. We have we have intelligence that the shooter, you know, there's nobody out there that you should be worried about. If there is somebody out there, yes, you would advise Gambians, be cautious. The person is armed, he's out there, be on the lookout. You know, just mm. bring some sort of reassuring voice to the Gambia. Yeah. This did not happen. Mm -hmm. We did not see this happen. And because we did not see this happen, knowing how Gambia operates, we were taking information from everywhere. And when the public is, is hungry for information, we, trust me, whatever comes out is what people would take until it turns out not to be credible. So I think that was a lost opportunity. And now what is happening is the police in their press, um, press briefing yeah. have not said anything, anything that is substantial and tangible that you and I can authoritatively rely on and say yes, an active 
investigation has been concluded mm -hmm. or is on its way. In fact, I said to my friend today that there is something that I don't see people talking about. This alleged gunman mm -hmm. was not caught because of extensive police investigation. This guy was caught because he confessed to a crime. And that is something we should not miss. Mm. This is not a person that was caught because of an extensive, I would repeat, an extensive police investigation. Wow. This is a person that was caught because the person confessed to a crime to a person who contacted the police to inform the police of the alleged confession of this gentleman. Wow. Now, as a lawyer, with these miscommunications uh, coming from the same cycle, the government, how does this weaken the government's case? If, for example, government is saying this and the uh, government spokesperson is saying this, um, and the, uh, the, 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 like you said, the press conference is debunking it systematically in a diplomatic way. And then, of course, um, you know, people having doubts in the stories, how does it weaken the government's case when it comes to this, even, you know, when it comes to going to court? Well, in, in any... In any because Sankari, you know, when Sankari was speaking, there were certain things that he said were very uh, vital. He said, for example, um, the, the gunman um, was hired... Uh, what was what, what, what? Was hired, right? He was paid, right? And he also said, after the attack, the man met with his co-conspirators in a mosque and where a vehicle was provided for him to leave. Now, the family, when they interviewed, we interviewed them, said the guy actually left the following day, right? And even a taxi driver also would have maybe carrying interview collaborated that. And also, they, were, they said the gun, uh, the, the guy told them there was a gun somewhere and they wanted to go retrieve it. And there was the government, um, the, the police were told us they have not recovered any gun, right? And there was a time there was uh, a car that was paraded on social media allegedly to be his vehicle. That uh, is not his vehicle, but that vehicle was on the scene. And people are linking that vehicle to other officials. So they're having, there have been a lot of miscommunications and mis, um, uh, you know, stories not marching that, you know, at some point, you know, people are just getting worried about communication that is coming from both sides, um, even though it was just one uh, interview and was press conference, but a lot of things are not matching up between the two communication uh, units. How would that affect government's case? It's, it's very easy to answer that question, um, Fatu. Mm -hmm. Now, you as a lay person, you are not the court of law. Yeah. You are not the defense lawyer. Mm -hmm. You as a lay person, you as a journalist, mm -hmm. what you have just said to me by way of a question yeah. is actually poking holes in the investigation detail, the investigation information that you are privy to that was given to you either by the police or by the press, the 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 interview of of um of the government spokesperson mm -hmm. now can you imagine what happens in a court of law where in criminal matters the threshold is beyond reasonable doubt mm -hmm. in other words beyond a shadow of doubt so anywhere in the prosecution's case and remember the the, the proof the proof of guilt mm -hmm. to prove the, the prosecution's case it always mostly resides squarely of Okay. Yeah. So it is for the police. The, the, the accused person can go to court and decides to exercise his right to remain silent and not say a word, mm -hmm. a word in that matter in mm -hmm. that court. Yeah. But it is for the prosecution to establish their case beyond all reasonable doubt. Now, let me let me tell you the doubts that you have just mentioned. Mm -hmm. You have just said one minute they told you that it was a certain car. Mm -hmm. They said that's not a car. Mm -hmm. I I watched the interview with the brother where the brother said. I mean, I don't know, and I'm trying to make sense of that. I tried to discuss this with my friend, that what right-thinking person, individual, would, would understand the gravity of such an offense, and they would seek to create an alibi for the person that has been accused? You shot a police officer dead, two poli three police officers, two died, and your brother is saying at the time of the commissioning of the, of the offense, he was with them. 
that is what you call in law an alibi. Mm -hmm. He is basically saying this person was not at the crime scene at the time that this act occurred. Yeah. So, so in all, all indicators are, is this guy mad? Are the brothers mad to come out when they know that there has been a direct affront on the security apparatus of this country and they go out to try to defend their brother? Nobody would do that. Yeah. You would be looking for other mitigating uh, mitigating circumstances and situation. Mm -hmm. You'd be looking at how you would appeal, how you would negotiate with the police. But you would not come out publicly with such authoritative stance to say that my brother was with me. And if you listen again to the audio, the audio that was leaked into the public domain, these are sensitive key information that the prosecution would need to establish a, 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 and secure a conviction against this gentleman. Mm -hmm. And the audio is all over social media. People are dissecting it. People are saying the lady was leading him. People were saying you could not hear the guy. The, the guy's voice was muffled. It was just the lady talking. People are now linking the lady to President Barra's wife. People are saying this. People are saying that. Now, for me, as a lawyer, no, but actually, the lady, the lady himself, on that audio, was saying he called President Barra's sister Corka. It was the lady actually who mentioned that name, Corka, saying that. She now, called again, that, yeah. And then you would ask yourself, you would ask yourself, mm -hmm. is a gunman so mad, so mad to go and kill security details and has nobody else to confess to his crime to but to somebody who's close to the president's sister? Maybe he doesn't, doesn't know. Maybe he doesn't know that they're close. Maybe he doesn't know. Well, that is such a coincidence, Fatu. Okay. Such a coincidence for such a high profile matter. And trust me, I think even the courts would have a problem establishing that. Yeah. So this whole thing is confusing. Now, what do you think go what 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 should be the direction now, Melvin? What do you think? As a lawyer, what do you another point? Yeah. Let me just give you another point before I forget. Mm -hmm quite interesting and, and i mean you don't it's not rocket science you just have to follow criminal trials all over the world in every jurisdiction now a person who has confessed to a crime voluntarily mm -hmm. this person was this person as as we are told did not confess under duress mm -hmm. so you cannot say a, a confession was obtained on the duress or the police were beating him or torturing him and he confessed no this was a voluntary confession of a person who made a confession even whilst out of the jurisdiction mm. of the Gambia. That is something you should put your finger on, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, if this person confessed to such a crime, yeah. why is the police telling us they could not find a mother weapon? If you are confessing to a crime, I mean, the first thing you would disclose is where is the weapon? Mm. Because you don't, you don't do half confessions. You either confess and go the whole nine years or don't confess at all. But I believe the police know exactly what they're doing. I believe this is a very critical, it's a very critical um, a matter in the prosecution's case, in the, in the case of the police establishing culpability. And whatever weapon there is has to match the bullets that were shot into the line, into the into the bodies of those of those of those of those um, three innocent um, men and, and a lady. So they have to be accurately sure with that information. Because trust me, it will be tested. It would have to be established that yes, this is the weapon that was used. The bullets that came out of that of that of that weapon, and most of these bullets and ammunition are serialized. It has to commensurate the type of weapon used, the type of ammunition that was used. And that is why we still cannot get that detail. We have a confession. They said they have the boots, they have the clothes, they have everything. They knew everything. In fact, like you mentioned, the government spokesperson talked about how they went into a mosque, how they, how they had a conspiracy, how they got into a car. But where is the weapon? That is the key. Hmm. Now, the other question I want to ask, which I don't know because, again, it didn't come up. Ha has an autopsy been done on these bodies that were already buried? I, I I cannot confirm, because but these are the things that you would need to prove a case in court. You I need the, the autopsy report. A pathologist would have to would have to be called as an expert witness to establish what 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 really you know officially like these people died of gunshots. This was the ammunition. This was the type of bullet used, etc., etc. Hmm. 
So what we have, what we have before us is a high profile case that the entire country is actually interested in. And the police have strategically, in a very clever way, diverted public attention to Sabali and Songo. Now, this man, uh, the alleged uh, suitor, right now is under custody. Um, would it, um, he should be accorded all, all his rights, right? He should have legal representation. What is, what kind of situation would you imagine he is in right now? Do, is he having access to a lawyer? Because if he's only speaking to the investigators without a lawyer, is that, how does this thing, how, how does it happen? I know these high profile cases most of the time, because I know I was, you know, the, this Pablo Jabi case, the, the, you know, one of the lawyers was telling me they could not even have access to their clients. These were people that were charged with 1.9 gram, whatever, some substance, and they could not have access to their lawyers, right? What about something like this, a high profile case like this? This guy is only speaking to investigators. Uh, there's no, is there any lawyer that is guiding him? Whatever he says without his legal guidance, how admissible is that in court? Is that anything that um, needs to, can be looked at or whatever? What, what, what is the situation right now regarding him? Oh, I think Melvin dropped and he's calling again. Okay, Melvin, sorry, drop. I didn't know. Oh, sorry. Did you hear yes. what I was saying? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. So I was so, talking so legal. The legal talking about what happens to his rights. Yeah. Now, two two things is at stake. Mm -hmm. The first thing is is something that would be an added advantage to his defense team if he ever has one, because it's a it's a capital offense and therefore the state is in um, the state must provide him uh, a legal aid okay. so in all cap capital offenses the state has to provide legal aid so if, that is if he cannot afford a lawyer or his family cannot secure legal representation or no gambian lawyer has you know has offered to do to take up the case pro bono which is for free mm. then the state um, is mandated to provide legal counsel for him mm -hmm. now on the on the standard police operations in the gambia mm -hmm. i had saj i was i was just laughing and i just said sent him a message quietly on them because saj was talking about you know uh, you know I, I mean i just see myself in a, in a californian you know court system it doesn't, yes. happen, like that it doesn't happen like this here yeah. so what the, the st telling the police that i'm not going to say anything and i'm just going to walk out um you know <laughs> no nah, it doesn't happen like that. you'll be there forever yeah. and and when you were when you were talking i was making a comment because you asked the you asked a very important question you were like um so for example sabali and sonko so the police decide to detain them beyond the the, the mandated um constitutional provision of seven to two hours what happens that yeah. was your question you were asking one of the one of the yes the panelists that, yes that it was on. yeah and what happens is you see the police understand the loopholes in the legal system mm -hmm. they understand the loopholes in the criminal justice system Melvin, you're gonna speak as i continue speaking i'll be back in just continue speaking i'll be back in a second pa. system works in the gambit by the time the defense lawyers will file those processes by the time they will take it to the court file it in court the court serves the state they come back they give a, a hearing date or hearing notice <laughs> trust me we, we would be it would be christmas mm -hmm. before that matter is determined mm -hmm. in fact in fact i think i'm not sure if the courts i think the courts are back but the court the courts are on recess and you have something like this you would have to 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 take it before before a, a, a vacation judge make an application for for you know all sorts of stuff that you would have to do you know and by the time you get because of how the court system is 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 um is is detailed mm -hmm. by the time you get that habeas corpus writ to even appear before a judge mm -hmm. that would have been christmas yeah. So the police know this. So the best thing to do, really, in Gambia, which I know, is to try to negotiate and force the police basically to respect the the, the constitutional um, 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 detention limit of seventy two hours of either taking them before a competent court mm -hmm. or letting them go.
-hmm. Because what they're being charged for is indeed a bailable offense, really. Mm -hmm. So they can be bailed. But then, the, the truth be told, I, I know of two instances, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, maybe as a journalist, mm -hmm. where um, the courts just last week granted bail to accused persons in the drug, that drug case, oh, and yes. the state refused to release them. Actually, actually, I, I kept writing about that story and somebody said to me, oh, you know, why are you interested in this in this drug case? But it's not about the drug case or whatever. No, it's not about the drug case. It's, it's about, about the fundamental, the human, fundamental rights. It's, it's human rights. About the court system. If the court grants it's them... About, it's about the police violating a court order. The, it's, it's about the police saying that they don't respect the court. Yeah, it is the, for you and I to be worried, to, to be scared. This is, because this is, where the police now do not respect the court, don't respect court judgments, they are not obeyed, they are not respected, then what happens to us? We become a lawless society. This is what I was saying. the law into their hands it, and there is no repercussion. This is what I was saying. That instant, the magistrate court in Bundung uh, granted them bail. After, after detaining them for almost 10 to 12 days, the magistrate court granted them bail based on jurisdiction issues and some other technicalities. The police, the, DH, the drug law enforcement, instead of letting them go, rearrested them and took them into custody. And again, they were rearranged at the Carnifying Magistrate Court on, I think it was Thursday. And my reporter was at the court, and then we had signal that they were they were parked there. The police and the the, the drug law enforcement agent they were all standing there, and you know we wrote that they were bailed, and then they withdrew. When they told the guys to come back to the drug law enforcement agency to pick their belongings, once they went there, they started look finding. According to the lawyer I interviewed Lyman Kamara, they started finding faults in the ruling of the magistrate's court. And then they, they, they told these people to come back and they arrested them. They are still in, de in detention, even though the court has bailed them. Melvin, that is really, really, really serious in this new dispensation where a court gives a ruling and the, and the drug law enforcement or the police violates that and arrest that person. Whatever crime that person must have done, once the court says, no, this is this, it should be that. And that is what's not happening right now. And that is scary. It is very scary. You see, I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. You see, in the Bob Keta case, mm -hmm. when he was granted bail, mm -hmm. okay, I'm mentioning this case because a lot of governments will be aware so they can just draw the dots. Yeah. When he was granted bail, the state, the state went to the Court of Appeal to yeah. appeal against the bail that was granted by the lower court. Mm -hmm. And the court, or, or the court of appeal upheld the bail, the, 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 the appeal of the, of the, of the state mm -hmm. prosecutors. And that was why his bail was revoked. Mm -hmm. That is what is respect for the law mm -hmm. and respect for judicial processes and respect for the courts. If the, if, the, if the drug law enforcement agency felt that these people shouldn't be granted bail, they felt that they have genuine, genuine um, 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 circumstances, compelling evidence that they can bring before a court, they should have appealed the bail. Mm -hmm. But you do not violate the courts openly, publicly, because what you're saying is that, you know what, the court can, excuse my language, just go to hell. Yeah. Just go to hell. And that is scary, because let me tell you, see, even Jame, even Jame did not openly violate the courts. He would have his mercenary judges that he would use to get the type of judgment or the type of outcome that he wants. Yeah. But he hardly violated openly the courts because he wanted to create um, a, a persona. He wanted to create an environment where people could see that the courts were functioning and they were effective. So he would not openly violate orders of the court like that. He mm. would clandestinely go around it, circumvent it. But to, to see, to see this, the, the police openly violating an order of the court, I mean, this is scary for me. Because it is telling me, it is telling other people that, you know what, you cannot even rely on having equitable justice in the Gambia because the executive, the police can choose to abide by court orders or not. And for me, that is a fundamental, fundamental affront on the rule of law. It's a fundamental affront on every democratic ideal and principles. And a country cannot progress where the law courts are not respected. A country cannot pro progress where, where court orders, court judgments are openly flouted. You cannot talk about democracy on one, on one hand. You cannot go to the Human Rights Council as a country boasting of democratic advancement uh, ideals in your country when you are blatantly, blatantly reducing the courts to laugh to a laughing stock. And I think it is very serious. I think the executive must not sit and watch that this thing goes by. 
I think President Barrow, if if he in, in, indeed wants to leave a legacy, this is something that he was he must jealously guard, yeah. jealously guard. And I also think the courts, the courts as well, have a fundamental role to play. You see, things like this used to happen in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It used to happen in Nigeria under General Sani Abacha. But you know what the courts did? Yeah. When the prosecutors were going to court and openly flouting court orders, were openly flouting court judgments, you know what the courts decided to do? Mm -hmm. They refused to grant the state prosecutors and police officers audience in the courts. And until the Gambia does that, the police will not respect the outcomes of the court. If a police officer flouts the court and they come to that same court for another matter, kick them out. Don't grant them an audience until they respect the order of the court. And it is only then that they would respect and, and, and uphold the sanctity of, of, of the judicial arm of government. I mean, I just hope they're listening to you because this is really serious. This, this was a great concern for me. Because, because it's exactly what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Now, the police know that what would happen, the lawyers will now go and file processes. Yeah. They'll take it to court. The yeah. court will serve the police. They will give a hearing date. Maybe they will give another date for another month. Two days before the case, the police can write to the court and say, we are sorry, we cannot attend. Yeah. Some the, prosec the prosecutor that's handling the matter is sick, he's in hospital. Meanwhile, the would be meanwhile they, they the, have loopholes. these people are they still in loopholes. detention. Yes. But it takes, it is only, the two ways you can get this sorted. Yeah. Two ways. Mm -hmm. Either the executive, either President Barrow com comes out and condemns in the strongest of terms mm -hmm. that the police and whoever in the Gambia must abide and respect all court orders, all court decisions and all court judgments, or the courts themselves can refuse to hear a single case from the state. Because remember, you cannot distinguish, oh, that's the police, that's the attorney general office, that no, they are all executive organs of the state. Yeah. And if the, if the courts decide not to grant audience to the attorney general, not to grant audience, audience to state prosecutors, wallahi, I'm telling you, the attorney general will ensure that the inspector general of police respects every decision and outcome of the courts. Wow. And that's the only way forward. That's the only way forward. And finally, the Sabali case, it's almost, it seems like they're going to spend another night. It's 7 o'clock. I have not gotten any update right now. Um from them um is you know it seems like they so what does that mean their rights have been violated already because it's over 72 hours absolutely it, it's, it's for, it, it amounts to false imprisonment hmm. because if you detain them the law says that you can only constitute and, and, and let me make this clear hmm. just because the law says that you can hold them for 72 hours does not mean that you have to hold them for 72 hours you can bring them and question them for 30 minutes. If the questioning would last for 30 minutes, you can do it under 30 minutes and let them go. Hmm. You can do it under an hour and let them go. What the courts, what the law is saying, what the Constitution is saying is that there's a time limit that you cannot. And what the Constitution is seeking to do is to protect their fundamental human rights. It's to protect their rights, the freedoms, and everything else that goes with it. The dignity of person. If you believe that you have credible information, you believe that you have a prima facie case, at least no matter how minimal, take them before a court of law. Take them before a competent court and allow the court to, to make its decision. Allow them to either have a court bail or for the court to keep them in remand. That is what the law says. If the police holds any detainee beyond the constitutional limit of 72 hours it amounts to false imprisonment no. Thank but you. then again mm -hmm. a precedence has already been created just last week what came out of it nothing nothing the police violated the court orders mm -hmm. where, uh, where accused persons were granted bail by the court yeah. so so for the for the police to flout the 72 hours constitutional limit it's a, it's a walk in the park it brings us to the question who is policing the police exactly nobody Nobody. And until that is done, then we are where we are, basically. And it's just sad. It's a sad reality. And, and like I always tell people, you know, now it is Sabali, now it is Sonko, but there will come a time. Because you see these things, this is how it starts. It starts in a very minimal level. Yeah. So the police are testing the waters. And, and violated the court order. What came out of it? Nothing. Nothing. And the Nothing. last time, Melvin, I, I it did, this brings me to the question. Um, the last time when Fat Jan was arrested, 
and we started saying, please release Padjani. And when um, the other cases, people started speaking up, and somebody, some people were saying, why are you defending this person? You know what they have done to you or something. And I said, look, this is not about Fadjan. This is not about Fatture or Sabali or Babora. This is about defending what is right. If we say, because I don't like Sabali, I don't like Sonko, so I'm not going to speak up because it's Sabali. You don't know when it's going to be you. As long as it's in within the limits of the law. If you have the voice and you're able to voice it out, and this is what is happening right now. Everything in this country is so polarized. It leaves people in between who don't belong to any of these camps, like just like that. Oh, they don't even know what to do, what to say. If you say anything or say anything, you are in opposition, as long as it's not favoring government, in this, even though if you're speaking within the limits of the law. And you say anything for the government, the opposition thinks also you, you know, you're against them. The country has gotten to a stage where this is our new reality. Now, bringing back to what you said, it's Sabali today, it's Sonko today, you don't know who it is. Why do you think people should have that mindset? Well, people should have the mindset because in every dictatorship, it creeps. Nobody is born a dictator. Mm -hmm. No one is born a but dictator. But we are not in a people dictatorship, right? We are not in a dictatorship right now. No. Okay. No, we are not in a dictatorship. When mm -hmm. when 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 Yaya Jami came, it wasn't. He was not a dictatorship. Um, I mean, yeah. he he wasn't a dictator. Yeah. I mean, he came. Mm -hmm. the, the entire Gambians and everybody embraced him because he, his, 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 his message was that of, of transparency and accountability, mm -hmm. good governance, a progressive and democratic society. Mm -hmm. You know, a Gambia that would be like Dubai. This is what people saw. This was what people believed in. Yeah. So it is very clandestinely done. It is done in a very strategic way and it comes in very small measures. Mm -hmm. So you see the drug people, these are not high profile Gambian celebrities. People don't really know them. I think most of them are from Guinea-Bissau or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it it, it, it 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 seemingly seems as if it's sliding past public mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if it was if it was you know somebody like high profile, just like let's say now the issue of Sabali and stuff, everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. But the police could could do away with not respecting the the the, the, the court granting an accused person bail. And nobody is talking about it. Everybody is silent about it. Mm -hmm. But you know what has happened? Mm -hmm. A precedent has been created. Okay. Because the police have tested the waters and nothing has come out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, what they're doing further is to test the waters yet again. And now this is a high-profile person. This is Sabali. They're going to try to keep Sabali beyond the 72 um, um, constitutional um, hours limit mm -hmm. and see what's going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Is Sabali going to come out tomorrow and then we all stop talking about it? And then we don't talk about it again until Melville is arrested and detained for 72 hours. But that, until until, until Fatutura is detained again for 72 hours. Is that, so is, what they're is, doing is, 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 is a bit like a carrot and stick stuff. Mm -hmm. They know the Gambia. They know how Gambians operate. Gambians are, are people that will come on, you know, with a loud bang and two minutes after it fizzles out. Mm -hmm. But then they are continuing to entrench their tentacles into every fabric of the society. And before you know it, mm -hmm. we are all doomed. And then it would be too. You see, when you cannot tame, if you have to tame a dog, a puppy, you yeah. do it when the when the when the dog is is, is small and young. Yeah. But when it grows old and has spread his tentacles and wings into every fabric of the society, mm -hmm. there's nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. Nothing that you can do about it. So now we are saying, okay, we're enjoying Gambia. It's a democratic country, or people are enjoying freedom of expression. People are talking. Nobody is dying. Nobody is killing. But you know what? That is not true. It mm. starts from a little drop, yeah. and one day soon the bucket will fill up and then it will start to spill and when it starts to spill then it will be disaster but if every gambian if every gambian go out and demand demand that because you know what mm -hmm. this is not gambians acting outside the law this is gambians acting within the remit of the law every gambian every sympathizer every person that believes in the rule of law should have been out demanding that sabali and sonko either be released or charged
Hmm. Or take him before a court of competent jurisdiction. That is what will send a loud clarion message to the executive that Gambia is a serious country and when the people say never again, it is a mantra that they believe in, it's a mantra that they live, and it's a mantra that they will not jeopardize or, 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 or put aside or set aside for anyone. But it starts with now. And if we let this slide, and tomorrow they decide, okay, it's past 72 hours, they leave Sabali tomorrow, we go quiet. No, that constitutional, um, um, the unconstitutional detention of Sabali must be advocated for. The UDP must take it to the courts. The IGP must answer. The police must answer. They should show cause why Sabali was detained beyond the, the 72 hours constitutional um, limit. It shouldn't be left aside. A precedent must be set. And that is the only way you can have an effective dispensation. You can have a country that respects the rule of law, a country that would respect um, institutions, respect policies, and respect, by extension, the courts. Thank you. You have said it all, uh, Melvin. Thank you so much for this. Um, you I are will, welcome. I will be doing an update tomorrow also based on what is going on. So once um, I, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll definitely want to have you on again. We will have an update. Yeah, but do not, but do not be surprised that they can release them today because I don't think I was trying to calculate. I don't think the seventy-two hours has elapsed. When were they arrested? Friday. What time? Friday at four thirty. They, they were calling at 4.30. They were there around 5 something, around 5.30. Yes, they told them to be there at 4.30. So they were there around that time, Friday. Yeah, but I know I was reading I was reading a, a case. I don't know, Sajo, I don't know if Sajo is still on, but maybe yeah. I was, it's, it's, it's a, because so, sometimes there's a, there's a bit of a gray area as to when the detention actually takes place. Because you see, the police are very smart. Yeah. So remember they said at first it was an invitation. Yes. Now, until they told them they cannot go, mm -hmm. that is where the detention starts. Okay. Because I was, I, was, I was looking at a Kenyan case mm -hmm. where it was very similar. So, so the police invite them. Yeah. But let's say Sabali never said, oh, I want to go home or I want to do something. So he's there at, at the invitation of the police voluntarily, yeah. at his own volition. Now, until that moment when the police say to Sabali, you cannot leave, that is where detention starts. Okay. And that is where the 72 hours constitutional mandate starts. But, but okay, if, for example, um, they called you for questioning, because I remember they called them and the panel was already seated there, according to what we know, and they spoke to them. <laughs> They spoke to them around uh, in the evening, and that was the last time they spoke to them, and they were told they are going to sleep there, and they slept. They were kept in, in, in the cell. So that means around that time, the, the distension has started, and that is already... Yes. Yes, yeah, so that was around, you, yes. know, you know, so, yeah. Around this time. Yeah. Around this time. Yeah. They're about, yeah. Yeah. So that's when detention starts, yeah. when, their, when their rights to movement was seized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens uh, here again. Yeah, let's today. see what happens. But whatever happens, we will be back here to give updates as to what happened. Um, I think, unfortunately, instead of talking about this arrest, we should be talking about our fallen soldiers and, and, and giving, um, uh, praying for them and mourning as a nation coming together and showing solidarity to the police and members of the law enforcement. But instead, we are also distracted. And hopefully... Uh, this yeah, because, because as of now, we don't have any tangible, accurate information that we don't have an active shooter out there we do not know and and that we do now, not know now that makes it more even scary yeah yeah thank you very much mel all right then take care thank, thank you so much so i'm just gonna thank you so much mel um so i'm just gonna somebody say 72 hours of walking hours but is that is it walking hours or is it just um allergy that's my lawyer, though. That's the one who gives me all the... When I heard that Savali and others will be charged for this, and I said, can you give me what this quotation says? What is the law on this one? And he will send me that. So that's my lawyer. So he's saying it has to be working hours. I don't know. Um, Nene, do you have any update before I leave? I'll, let me so. Hey, Mr. Mane. Mr. Mane. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mane. Mr. Mane, do you have any update? For the moment, no. I, I just left about 15 minutes ago. I'm just getting home time to change. Yeah. When I was leaving, there was no update. Uh -huh. Because apparently, amongst themselves, they are fighting someone to withdraw the case, someone to prove out new charges. So, I'm going to just have 
So there's no update as we speak, right? No, for the moment, no. I just came home to you to change and go back. Okay. You know, so for the moment, um, yes, we don't have any updates. Okay. But um, I told them if I can change it before I get back, they have to call me. Wow. Uh, so, so, I, yeah. so who is the lawyer? I mean, uh, it's Bori Esture, right? Bori Pure, yes. And, and so, the... Bori Pure is the lawyer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they have not, yeah. but they cannot file anything. It's already late because the courts are closed. Good. So the lawyers also are not able to file anything because the courts are closed, right? Like the, I was saying, the lawyers also are not able to fa um, file any um, bail applications because the courts are closed, right? Yes, yes I, I believe so because he went to, to, to negotiate with this um, because given the, the situation in the country right now with the vacation judges, yeah. If you if you want to file any petition with those people, it's going to take a very long time. Okay. So we went to negotiate directly with these people. Just to have so um, they they promised that they were going to let go mm -hmm. of those people today by 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. But apparently, the man they are they are still fighting. Mm -hmm. Some some want to drop the charges and some want to. To, to add even more charges so that they can start drafting and keep them overnight. Wow. Yeah. So because if they don't try few charges, they just have to stop it and, and, and let him go today. And some don't want to let him go today. So they want to do it tomorrow. Oh. So, so apparently there is a fight there amongst themselves in the Mali Okay. Yeah. So, but I just came to change and because I've been seeing they're all this sweating and all, and it's all sticky. I yeah. just came to change and I'm going back there. Okay. In about 20 minutes I'll be out there again. I'm leaving again to go back. To go back, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Yes. Call me. Yeah. Okay, do I let you know? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Thank you. Another Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, this is it. I'm going to wrap up now. Um, this is it. There's no, they're still in custody and um, the, police have not come back as to what is happening so hopefully before the end of the day we get any updates it's 7 7 18 right now in the gambia and uh, hopefully today or tomorrow but whatever update we get we'll be back here to update you sometimes it's good to have this conversation directly instead of just writing and you know to 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 to, to explain to people but i think uh, mel was spot on we need to start uh, respecting our laws you know for for the judge or magistrate to give a ruling and the drug law enforcement uh, re arrest those people that were bailed those things and you know this is not it's not about the people it's about the system some of us don't even know these people i don't even know who pablo never heard of his name until this case but the fact that he the judge two two judges in a row granted him bail because they feel like his rights that is within their rights for that to be violated by a government official, that is that is serious. And I think nobody should be quiet about that. So I think, um, you know, and also with the case of Sabali and others, um, if the 72 hours, I don't know, those people who know the law will tell us, some are saying it's clocks now. As far as I'm concerned, they were arrested and they were taken into custody on Friday. Today is Monday, so it's already 72 hours. If it goes beyond 72 hours, what is it? What is it? Is it uh, violating their rights? What is it? So uh, we will get back to you once we get any update. Thank you all for watching. And to all of you who sent us stars, I don't remember everybody, but I do remember um, Yunus Haidara. I remember Natam uh, Natamas. Actually, Natamas sent us stars today. From Borawa, thank you, thank you for the stars. Uh, I also remember Farmata Sise Maitoma. I see uh, Nanding sending us stars. CB, one Lamin Bojang, Lamin Dabo, Usman, and a lot of you send us a lot of stars. Thank you very much. We appreciate that because those stars turn into cash for the network and it helps us to grow the network and be able to bring you programs and more programs like this. Thank you very much for always watching and sharing. We will be back again once we get any update as to what really is happening uh, with Sabali and um, and uh, Sabali and Sirifo Sonko. Um, so until we come back again, I want to thank you all for watching. 
and hopefully um, um, we, we, we're able to see you again. Thank you. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be back tomorrow to give you a break. Hey, Auntie Chilev. Auntie Chilev, how are you, Auntie Chilev? <laughs> Usman, Father Jalo, thank you for the stars. We appreciate Thank you so much, Usman. Thanks for the stars. Thank you, Say Ture. Thank you so much. Buba mm -hmm. thank you for the stars. Thank you so much. We appreciate. Thank you for the stars.
Thank you, Arama. Thank you. Thank you, Jaliba. Party to the Baron Kilowatt. Jaliba remains my favorite artist up to this day. Thank you very much. See you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, we get an update. We'll be here tomorrow again to speak about this and whatever update we get. But hopefully, before the end of the day, they, they are released. Uh, but also, we'll, we'll do this to also, you know, have this direct interface with you with the followers on issues that are happening in the country. If not, I'll be back on Thursday on my show. Thank you very much all for watching and thank you for sending us stars. Thank you for following and sharing. Thank you very much. See you again.